Oh, uh, oops. I accidentally hit it. Good morning, good morning, Joe. Good morning, Ryan. And caller number one. We're welcome. Oh, welcome to this house. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Wow. A lot going on all over the world. I so what I see is uh just uh a lot of psychological good and the tree of good and evil going on. Uh, we have to stay focused and stay out of the fear's way and put our uh, put our you know ear to the rail and listen for the train that's coming and and, and know when the train is coming close or you'll get run over by the train. But uh, I just uh, amazed. If you look too much at the world, uh, you know, you'll get discouraged. Because there really are no answers. Just temp temporary fixes. Symptoms of, of not what's causing the problems, but just the results of it. And then people putting Band-Aids on it. And then for believers, it, it's... Uh, being concerned about other people when when the lord says get it in order get your house in order first and then then uh, we'll work on the other stuff and in the process he'll tell you when to go and when not to go because you're constantly spending time with him so that's pretty much it um we're dealing with uh, a full assault from the enemy uh, because he knows his time is short. And it's all about God and, and his mercy, his grace, his judgments, his, his, uh, who he is. So, um, when people ask for things, so the, uh, later, earlier this week, uh, uh, they wanted to know, um, I just asked the question to this one particular gathering. And uh, I said, what do you need? And I said, well, we need the Holy Spirit. We need is, you know, all these adjectives. And uh, I said, well, how, how many are, do you think are filled with the Spirit? And they said, about half. Okay. And are, are you moving in the Spirit much? Not really. Okay. So I said, I'll, I'll pray about it and we'll come. And so the Lord said, go. So I said, I want everybody who wants to be filled or if they have some misunderstandings to bring them uh, oh, when we come and the Lord will uh, answer them not me particularly but he'll, he'll answer them and uh, we pray for the ones who just want to cause problems or whatever their issue is uh, uh, not to come what? I said that's right Because uh, we want people of faith. Well, where do you get that? Oh, uh, somebody by the name of Jesus. Well, what do you mean? He went to his own town where he grew up and he was a contractor slash carpenter, and head of the house and had brothers and sisters. And they were quite successful and they did a good job. But when he started talking like even a prophet, much less God, uh, they were ready to stone him. I mean, it wasn't like today you go to a school and who knows how many people are there. You get to know a small percentage of the people, but you really don't get to know everybody. But this was a, this was a small town and, and uh, all the heads, they, they went to this, everybody went to the synagogue and everybody knew everybody. So, uh, what are you saying? I'm saying, just go, all I did is go in and say, okay, you want it? Why, why, uh, let's clear up a few issues that are very common, that uh, what uh, receiving the power of the Holy Spirit is different than being in filled. why, what water baptism is. And the first thing I did is, is we went through the sinner's prayer. Why? 
if they're not going to say the sinner's prayer, there's a problem. It's usually spiritual, but it could be under the mind or whatever. It's not my call. But if I see a lot of people just not saying the sinner's prayer, uh, my question is, there's a big hindrance there, or maybe they're not even born again. They don't understand. They just joined the church. It can be even a Pentecostal church. It doesn't matter the brand. It could be Catholic. It could be whatever. Just listen to the people. So we taught on that, and uh, they all responded immediately and with volume, not shouting, but just really positive. And well, that was in line. I says, "Okay, now who who doesn't who doesn't uh, who's having a, a challenge?" And they said, "Well." I, 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 I need the Holy Spirit. I said, well, uh, well, have you asked for it? Yes, okay. Well, what you need is really the, the, uh, the evidence, not, not the gift. The gift is something that if I give you, you 10 bucks and I say, this is a gift, you can spend it however you want. You can give it away. There. I've had people who have given me donations, and when I turn around right in front of them and give them, to a person somebody directs me to give it to, they're upset. I gave this to you. Is it a gift? Yeah. So I'm listening to God just like you're listening to God. Okay? But, 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 no, no buts. You know? God will, if you're believing God, he, he, you'll get the blessing if that's what you're looking for. If you're being obedient to God, that's, uh, that's it. So, uh, anyhow, uh, I said, uh, and we went through that, and uh, so I, I said, what about, uh, 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 and as we were going through this, and of course she stuttered, stopped a few places. And uh, so, uh, and this is with uh, everybody there. And uh, so she had to leave early to go to work. And uh, so I said, no, come here. Or, um, the Lord wants you to have this. And because uh, I said, the, the evidence is speaking in tongues, why? And I explained to her the, the negatives and, and why people don't want it. But I said, if, if it really were of the devil, um, wouldn't you think the devil would want everybody speaking in tongues? Why do all the churches fight it? Why do all the cults fight it? Why do they try to duplicate it? But when you say truth in Jesus' name, they can't say Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So rather than and go through a deliverance thing and 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 uh, uh, disrupt what the Holy Spirit's doing, I says, okay. Um, uh, we went through uh, Luke uh, 11 where it says, you know, will God give a, a scorpion or you know whatever uh, to somebody uh, being an evil person? Well, we do that. God, Father, lights give you the Holy Spirit, the Raha Kadesh, to those that ask. And that's for power. You're born of the Spirit. And why the speaking in tongues? Because he confused it at Babylon. But that's, you know, I don't want to reason. So I just said, hey, it's the evidence. So uh, as we went, uh, she started speaking in tongues. And I said, I want everybody to speak in tongues. Now, this isn't the same operation of in the church, which very uh, there's an order to it and whatever. But if you don't personally have the gift of the Holy Spirit of power being filled with it, um, you, you, you'll, uh, if you don't use it, you basically you won't lose it, but it's of no use to you. And uh, so uh, she understood that. And uh, so we all prayed in the Spirit. And she started to, but she stuttered and stopped. And, and so I said, in Jesus' name, any hindrance, uh, uh, we tell it to leave in Jesus' name. And I said, no one here is going to try to embarrass you. And, and this is for you privately till you get comfortable with it. Then you're able to operate in the church if the Lord is giving you something to share with the church. That's a ministry uh, action. And he directs that. Oh, okay. So we stuttered, stopped, and, and there was a lot of pressure. And then finally she just broke through and started praying in tongues. And she would stop. I said, no, you're doing it. Just confirm it. Why? It's just like salvation. If somebody's accepted Jesus Christ, repented of their sins, they're saved. I myself, when I was saved, I went up a whole bunch of times because I felt conviction, but it was probably just uh, I didn't understand and I wanted to make sure that I that I was born again and saved. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. 
uh, and once you get understanding, you can do it. So anyhow, when she starts praying in tongues, here's the whole point. Everybody else there rejoiced and went into it works. It was crying and, and just, oh, just they're so happy for her. It wasn't a religious service where normally you have people who are jealous. Why don't I have it? I waited 20 years for it, or I, I don't believe in it, or I think it's a bit of No, we addressed all that up front. But everybody got happy. Everybody got happy. And finally, I just had to, to, to stop them because they were just rejoicing on and on. This went on for quite a while. And I knew they had to, some of them had to go to work and that. So I, I just said, well, we must do things. To, but I, you keep doing it privately. And, and if there's any questions or people bring something up, well, then, then let's go over them uh, and use the Bible. Right now, we're not going deep into the Bible because you're believers and you've really received. You just needed confidence and, and some understanding of, of how it works. Because most places I've been, they don't follow what the word says because there's not a whole lot about it. Uh, but what there is is sufficient. Uh, they follow what somebody else does. And, and when you do that, that, that can be a trap. It's not the action that somebody else has is do they speak in tongues privately? It's not what language it is or isn't or whatever. Do they speak in tongues? Why? When you're yielding to the spirit, you're yielding to the spirit is the issue. And whatever God is bringing out through your mouth, which is where it has the power, his spirit speaking through a believer's mouth, being born again, then he'll do what he says he'll do. And he'll build up the person and he'll help people. You can intercede for people you don't know, nations, kings, whatever. It's happening. And it's not going through the, the, uh, the brain filter. And that's where the problem is. That's why a lot of people who, who don't believe in speaking in tongues or, or the, it's a separate gift, uh, they're wondering why there aren't miracles all the time. It's because they're filtering it through their understanding in the brain. And in the brain, uh, it's being renewed, and uh, it, the, the enemy has access. He can't read your mind, but he can put thoughts out there. And God's, God's there. And if you're reading the word and in the word, you can do it, but there's a constant fight. Praying in the spirit. God can speak to the spirits or whatever he has to do, however he has to do it, and he can build you up from the inside out where uh, it, it comes that you can be rejoicing all the time. But it's an effort. And I told them, I said, over 50 years uh, of ministry alone, uh, I still have to push in to pray in the spirit every day. And, and uh, I don't believe I did today. <laughs> But I did pray beforehand, and I did have communion then, but I, I didn't. Why? I, I know that it, it, it draws me up. Let's see. No, I, 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 I didn't. A lot of stuff was happening. So it, it's not a, a badge of honor to show to people. You're really supposed to do it in private. And then uh, I, I shared with them different experiences that happen when, when you pray in the Spirit. But don't go for the experience. Know that God is speaking through you, building up, taking all those burdens that you cast on him, your obedience to the word, and your flesh isn't fighting you. Your mind isn't fighting you. Yeah, lots and lots of benefits. So anyhow, uh, it was tremendous for me because some of these people I hadn't seen for two, three, four, five years. And uh, amazing growth, amazing growth. And that's probably because I was praying in the spirit for them. Because after a while, if you pray through your mind, you, you lose it after a little bit. You don't know what to pray for or how. You've gone through the dog, the cat, uh, all your relatives and friends and enemies. And, and uh, you know, uh, you know that, then you can't think much. But praying in the spirit, you can do it. And then let's just say somebody in the family you've been praying and praying and praying for. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, because you pray in the spirit, you know when the unction to pray in the spirit comes. And, and when God wants to say something, so you stop whatever you're doing, you pray in the spirit uh, till it, it like that, that feeling leads. Okay? You, you like get lifts and gets happy. 
And then you'll find out that somebody avoided, a, they don't know how, they came to an intersection and a car going 100 miles an hour, uh, a truck, and there's no way around, and they ended up on the other side. How, how, how does that happen? And I can go on and on of those kind of experiences, but they didn't know about it, sometimes never know about it, but uh, for weeks, months, years, what were you doing on this day? Oh, yeah, oh, I had terrible acrobat. but God showed me somebody was praying for it, and da 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 And I've had people come up to me and say, were you praying for me in such and such? I said, why? I said, what happened? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I did stop and pray in the spirit for a while, but uh, I don't know what's going on. And uh, sometimes you'll, uh, like uh, women giving birth or like, going through a miscarriage, and God wants to, you know, they're praying not to or whatever, and, and uh, women especially uh, feel like they're giving birth, but it, it's it's not a, it's not, they feel all the things, but they're not pregnant. And they're not sick, or they're not having a baby, you know, or a miscarriage. Uh, so that that's standing in the place. Uh, S4C, uh, in a way, does that when they call people up and stand and intercede for people who aren't there or who, who need to get saved. So um, it, it's very important in this time because there's a lot of confusion, especially uh, if if you for people who want to cause. We're all concerned about what should we do or not do. And it's hard to make heads and tails of this stuff and all the, the planned disasters and the, the natural ones. Uh, uh, you don't know whose side, what side, why they're doing it, whatever, who's playing what game. There's a war going on. It's not the one that the Lord, the, the Lord has already got it won. He just needs us to go to him and we don't have to go through a lot of that sorting out who's lying, who's telling the truth, and what have you. And we can see with clear eyes. And when we play in the spirit, our mind doesn't have to get involved. <laughs> and when we need to hear something, we can hear from God plainly, clearly, and understand it, even in our mind and our body. So, uh, but it, this is not a normal occurrence uh, for me. Um, uh, but what I know when God moves, it's very normal. And the reason I mention it is because it, it is, uh, if it's happening for me, it's happening on believers all over the world. And if it's happening for them, it all happens at the same time. So it seems like the enemy, when he attacks, he attacks in a certain area of living and thinking and all of that and also god he comes back and counters it with the with the movement of the spirit but a lot of people who used to jump on planes when the spirit's here the spirit's there whether it's real or not yeah but i'm talking personally if everybody takes it personally prays in the spirit knows how to work within a church over time then when god needs you to go someplace or do something you can go by yourself with the money, without the money, and you understand what's going on because you've walked in the spirit for a long, long time. And uh, it's not how much book knowledge you have, although it's good to read the word of God and and, and just uh, meditate on it. Uh, meditate means uh, think and, and speak it and take it apart and research it. But really praying in the spirit will uh, heighten that to where you can stay on a chapter for a month and God can speak to you out of it. And you, you, you could have never gone to school, period, much less graduated high school. It has nothing to do with that. And then you can overcome the things that the, the, the enemy is trapping you with, whether it's work or friends or relatives. They all had relative uh, issues. And uh, so I said, okay, you want you want those to know that they're done, then start praying in the spirit, get happy. So when you call back home and that hear all the problems in that, just tell them how much you love your husband or how much you love your wife, depending who it is, and 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 uh, why you married them, and they're such a good person, and and I can see them almost stutter sometimes, but they're definitely no, that's not the issue. They're all under pressure. You don't think the husband or the wife's under pressure? That you don't come home, and, you know, once a year or for a week or two, please. They, they have issues to deal with just as much as you do. So praying in the Spirit is a powerful, powerful, powerful. It is the power. He says it's the, it's the gift. He says, Jesus said, I got to go so I can multiply. It's God's Spirit. Once you have God's Spirit, and so what else do you need? There's nothing else. 
you need to be obedient and follow it and, and build it up. And that's an act uh, of obedience and love on your part towards God who saved you from everything. That's what I told you. And so uh, they got out. We were working all the religious stuff out, basically, and all the stuff. They, why doesn't hear? I said, when you pray, believe that you've received. When? When it happens or when it's said? No, it's already happened in, in the in the spirit, and it'll manifest in the spiritual, but it's done. Well, why don't I see it? Well, I keep thanking God till I see it. And then once I see God, I, 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 I rejoice, but I've already got it. And God will even give it to you when you're praying in the spirit that you'll start getting happy when you pray because you've received it in the spirit. I mean, you literally will get happy. And when it really happens, it's not that you don't care, but you've already been rejoicing for days, weeks, and months while, while, while God's delivering it, however he does that, to everyone's glory. Uh, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I'm happy and all that, but I was super happy when I prayed because I received it. So it's a way to learn how to each person. He wants to flow through every believer, every born again believer, whatever denomination. The problem with denominations and churches, they'll tell you why you can't do this and why you can't do it. On the high side and on the low side, what I mean by that, a low side is, oh, you can't do this anymore because. And then on the high side, you can't do this because <laughs> you're not part of this group or you haven't done this or this. You know, all experiences which have nothing to do with what God said in his word. If he treats salvation any different than he treats receiving the, uh, the, the filling of the Holy Spirit, then, then something's wrong. The only reason it has to happen after they're born again, not particularly after they're baptized. It can go before or after. But uh, because uh, he's going to put his spirit, he won't put it in an unclean vessel. So if he does put it in you when you ask for it and, and, and have repented in that, uh, that means that you, he's forgotten about all your sins. You haven't. And so the Holy Spirit's going to help you clean out that un, unregenerated mind where it's not condemning you 24-7. And actually helping you to sin because, oh, well, I give up. I just can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't. And, and, and all the people around you, uh, who who aren't following God and don't pray in the Spirit, they, they're encouraging you. You can't. No, you can't. You just got to be a, a groveling worm till you die. Or you have to be specially touched and be given a special something or other. I don't see special anywhere in the Bible. You have to accept him for what he did on the cross and rose from the dead and believe it and act upon it and follow his word. His right ruling and, and be obedient. And when you're not, you mess up. You, you confess it and say, I'm not going to do that again. That's called repentance. Okay, that's all of that. We don't have to sacrifice animals anymore and all that. But there's still a law because Jesus wrote it. Moses wrote it down. Okay, It's what's going to be in heaven forever. Hello? The Bible is one book from beginning to end. Okay, But one before. He was doing it in hope, and then after uh, he, he rose from the dead and conquered that, he says, it's finished. Well, everything, it's finished. So we either accept it and follow him, and he's given us all the tools to do it, or we don't. Now, what about people who are born again? Well, they're going to have to deal with God on that, and, and I pray they all, they all come in. But I've noticed uh, in, in just my personal and people I know that when they get the whole and they get that joy. Wow, it's off the charts. People are just crying. And, thank and they were so thankful that she received. Not that she was part of the group. It was just that she received. It. They were just so happy. And then they were happy for everyone who miracles and, and however they worship God and whatever was going on. And it, it all broke loose, but it wasn't uncontrolled. It wasn't, it, it wasn't crazy. And what is crazy? I've been in some of the crazy thing when the spirit moves. Yeah. Seeing miracles, people get saved. But people try to duplicate it because they think, oh, that's the way to do it. Well, I, I question if they're ministers, number one. So I have a talk with them. And if, if, if minister or anybody won't go through the salvation prayer, when I'm saying it with them, 
that means they really haven't made a commitment. And there's, there's a familiar spirit someplace trying to block them. So we just quietly say in Jesus' name, any spirit that's trying to hinder you has to leave in Jesus' name. You're saying the same thing. Leave in Jesus' name. If they manifest, they say, well, what, what if they manifest? Because they've had some manifestations. I just said, what Jesus said, be quiet. You have no, you have no power. Put down that machete. Put down that desk. Boop, they fall down. Uh, witches, you, you, your, your power you've gotten from uh, your master has to leave. I, they know I'm talking about Satan, and I know I'm talking about it. Everybody else says, well, what are you talking about? They go screaming out, I've lost my power, I've lost my power. Did I do it? No, I just listened to God. The Holy Spirit did it. In Jesus' name. I just do what Jesus said. He said, I do it in the Father's name. So I'm doing it in Jesus' name. Why? Because scriptures say that the Father said, I've given all judgment and power on, unto my son because he went to the cross and was obedient lived a whole life obedient to me just like you can when you're filled with his spirit and become more and more like him that's the good news in the gospel okay that's it Brian. just kind of where i was going there we sat and you know i just said hey you have some questions some reservations i don't know everything but god does and I've been through a whole lot of stuff on both sides, the foolish side, the good side, the bad side. So hopefully I'm more on the good side. Yeah, that's, Why is, that's, does, that, does that make sense, Ryan? Did you have some questions there in, in, in ministry? And, uh, and, and, and the signs and wonders, people are looking for just like the uh, – non-believers were in jesus time they were looking for some spectacular thing and they don't realize that peace that he gives did, did you when you started speaking tongues, did you have a whole lot more victories a whole lot more answered prayers whether they came quickly or long but you knew they were from god and they didn't come from any other place except yes the lord okay that's those are signs yeah. and wonders i i just wanted to clarify that because i'm talking about myself too ryan uh, right. i used i used to think well you know there got to be 500 people on the all and i've been in those situations i told them uh, one church i went to uh, um uh i walked in there and the uh shekinah glory like uh, uh it wasn't fog because it was lit up and it was during the day in the morning uh the shekinah glory was over the church and that they uh where i lived at that time in the states uh and it it was a move of god where within a mile or two you can find any place on the side of the road to park uh and people are coming in so it goes, i guess there's between two thousand and five thousand hard to i'm not too good at numbers sometimes that way and never researched it much. Uh, but anyhow, I, I walk in there, and uh, pretty soon we, we just started saying, singing hallelujah. It was hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, the entire church, the entire church, as far as I know, uh, started speak, pr singing in tongues, okay? Just like you would say a little kid, well, la, da, 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 but, but, but I mean, you know, uh, you know, with words and stuff based on hallelujah, because hallelujah means praise God in, in, in every language. Uh, and uh, anyhow, God harmonized thousands of voices, young people, old people, in the spirit. It's a kind of an earthly not even close but it would be something like a real good jazz session where where just everything is harmonizing uh, and it's flowing as one voice even though it's different voices and uh, the shekinah glory it just got like fog in there because of that well are you looking for that no but but god's going to come and he's going to manifest himself where people truly are get lost in him and he's going to show up He's going to show up in a miraculous way. 
So what was the miraculous way that, that all these uh, people, everyone received the Holy Spirit in speaking in tongues, every single one. And they came, well, are you going to come back next week and teach? No, not unless the Lord tells me. I said, uh, well, we've covered the issues he wanted to teach, and, and I'm happy to, but uh, I, I'm not in it for that, you know. And uh, so I sat there. They served, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, not the greatest, uh, but, but good food. And there we ate. And uh, then one by one, they... Because they weren't afraid. I wasn't the the prophet, teacher, whoop de do anything. They sat down and they started talking about, well, you know, I've done this and I've done that. And I didn't jump down their throats if their doctrine wasn't perfect in that. I've been through it many, many times, like you just said, Ryan. And, uh, uh, but God answered their question because I'm not, I'm not listening to the, to the, to the familiar spirits or their ideas or their their computer i'm listening to them in their heart so the, uh, uh, but one thing that was interesting is nobody says well you're not listening to me usually they say they're not uh, the those familiar spirits that they've been leaning on for years and had the headphones uh, connected to their head uh they don't say that they're always critical they're always saying you're not that you're not this and, and wow They'd say, yeah, that's right. Wow, that's good. And then after that, the, uh, the, the, the pastor who, who works uh, went to work a little late and uh, managed uh, a, a facility. And they had 30% higher than their best day ever. And she's witnessed to them uh, about how when you're obedient to God uh, and faithful to him, not particularly to give him money or whatever, but just, just to be in way, which includes money, but it's, it's not. But she, she noticed the sign and wanted Why? Because she's looking for it. And she didn't even pray for it. But that, why did God do that? To give her favor with that company, elevate her because she's supporting the church, a very, Poor church, where hardly anyone there has any money of means, and um, so uh, uh, that's what he's doing. It's it's and and then conversely to the churches that have a lot of money, uh, I, I I had one fellow. He's been a Christian all his life. I was ministering to him, and things happened over the last couple of years that we all know about, and so basically he didn't have a job. And um, ran out of money living in hotels and, you know, all the things necessary. He was single. But he was faithful to the Lord. He, he wasn't a, a womanizer or anything. He was born again, filled with the Spirit. And um, he, uh, I said, because uh, we were talking about a few things. And he said, well, why is my friend uh, not not?" being a buddy with me you know he's a minister now and all that and i said well number one he probably trusts you or does he trust you yeah he says well he's dealing with a whole bunch of people who are religious or have problems or whatever and he needs your help praying in the spirit and stuff not just to minister to you and secondly you know you were asking about uh tithing and giving and i says uh, did you ever pray about say going out to lunch or something for most of your life except these last three years because you had a credit card that could buy a car with that credit card he, he laughed he says no i didn't he said now i don't have to my knowledge any credit cards and i said well and now God's answering your prayers. And look at all the miracles he's done. It's personal, so I can't go into detail. Many, many, many miracles. And he's kept you alive. And and you're complaining why you don't have this and that. And he humbled himself. I mean, he went to work. You know, uh, you know, most people would say menial work. But God maneuvered him around, took him places, and has blessed him and kept him alive. 
he was on uh, death's door a couple times through anxiety. So um, it's real. It's real. And the reason the enemy in the world fights it so much, if, you, if you're embarrassed, how in the world can you be embarrassed if you're alone? I don't know. Explain that to me. I don't comprehend that. Or there's different motives. But boy, praying in the Spirit, the evidence, not the gift. And it is the gift of the Holy Spirit personally. When it's operating in the church, it's an operation of the Holy Spirit in the church. That's God's using. But if you don't pray in, in, in tongues privately, he's not going to, all the other gifts are energized over that faith. And it's not complicated to find out who has what and what. You just go through the sinner's prayer. If they stutter, and they stutter at, at uh, do you believe Jesus Christ is, uh, uh, was uh, killed, uh, gave his life up on the cross, went down to hell, and, and on the third day rose, and, and then went on to heaven and took his blood uh, so that we could be saved and born again? Yes, and you said it with me? Fine. Then you know they're born again. Now the other issue, power of, of, of the spirit and speaking in tongues is a power gift because you have the spirit of god and you love people you want to help them so who's going to help them who helped us who helped me it was the holy spirit <laughs> i don't care if you're president of whatever or or you dig ditches for a living and i've done both i've done both And let me tell you, the uh, Bible's correct. It's a lot sweeter to, when I say both, uh, it, it, it's, it's a lot sweeter to, to go to sleep after a hard day's work. A lot working for a wage than, than management. And what is the key to either side of that fence? The same Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit, whatever your job, your occupation, what you do have, don't have, doesn't matter. With God, He'll He'll use that and turn what was meant for evil around to good. And who's who put the evil on it? The devil all the time. That's what he does. That's just what he does. It's not his job, but that's what he does. He wants to be God. So what's happening right now? A whole lot of people want to be God of their lives. And I'm talking about start at the church right. they're afraid afraid of that they might be embarrassed or lose money or whatever the fear i mean it's the craziest things if you're in ministry any time at all i mean i don't try to predict anything i'm astounded every time so i just keep my mouth shut listen to god do what he says and people will argue oh that's not what it is da, 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 da. Or they want to pick a fight, go outside and, and, and uh, roll up their sleeves and, and let's have it out because I'm telling their business. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just listening to God. And when you're listening to God and referring to Him and praying the Spirit, He protects you. I won't go on. To, I mean, physically protects you. Things off the chart, misunderstandings, flat out lies. Wow. Uh, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, relationship, financially, uh, uh, every everything you can think of. And so with God, God, you'll overcome. I don't like the translation uh, that, that that Israel is uh, a prince of uh, uh, prince of God. No, it means uh, Israel means uh, overcomer ale so overcoming in in god we're overcomers how do we overcome by getting born again getting rid of the sin and walking with him as our god our our, our husband our our everything number one and when we do that he'll show us how to relate to earthly wives and and because uh, he looks at, at a marriage whatever uh, not, not the perverted one, but uh, he, he looks at that as one person. And if both parties are going to God, that's a blessing. If one party is, 
he can deal with that. One party has faith that the children, he says, if, if until they have an age of accountability and know what they're committing to in life or not committing to, that's that's when it's off. And when that stops and starts, I'm glad I'm not making that call. So our duty is to bring them up in the in the in the Lord. Teach them about Jesus and that. How can you teach them if you don't know yourself? Oh, I just got a, I just got saved. What's that mean? Are are you walking with God? Are miracles happening? All those aren't miracles. Believe me, it's a miracle to have food on the table. Okay, let's just say you, you, you got lost your house and and, and uh, I had that happen once. Had that happen once. People committed to certain things and didn't do it. Came and picked picked up a, at a, a facility I was at. Picked up the uh, a real nice uh, 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 home. The repossessor came out, was literally crying after what we talked for a while, and I ministered to him. And I, everything I put out, 11 miles from the nearest phone and water, much less in the desert, and put it out on the ground. And God arranged somebody else with a, uh, a camper. I had not known that much, and he came and uh, handed me the keys. And I, he said, I'll help you with your project here and doing a few things. Why? Because I was faithful. I didn't call them. Didn't have a phone. They didn't have the cell phones at that time. That's God. That's God. Well, that's that's you because you know I wasn't a minister then at a church. I think the best I've been is uh, well, I do, I do go in, but it's it's more as a, a a real pastor. He he he's there to deal with a certain community, okay? And most real what I call real pastors, they know their pastors. They know their limitations, and um, uh, and the ones that go into office is because they've been operating four, five, ten, twenty, thirty years, and and they they just recognize what God uses them a lot in. Usually because they have to overcome a whole lot of stuff in that same area, and uh, whatever. So I don't spend any time on what ministry you have. We have the ministry of Jesus Christ, all of us, and it's our duty to help everyone. Come into the knowledge of it, not follow us necessarily, but to follow Jesus and how to take him there. And like Ryan just said, uh, took him a long time. I had to stumble a lot. I don't know anyone in life who hasn't had good times, bad times, stumblings, and all that. And if they say they always had it great or always had it bad, I, I can look them in the eye and say, You're lying. Oh, it didn't work what you told me to do by the Holy Spirit. I says, you're lying. I said, did you do this and do this and do it? Well, I tried it one. No, you didn't do it, right? Yeah, okay. That took 45 minutes. Now, do you, do you want to get over and God to heal you in that? Okay, let's here's, here, let's go. And, and are you going to do it this time? Yeah, okay. And they come back and they're healed or they're blessed, right? Physically, financially, or whatever. Problem is on the high side when they get their businesses or they get their million dollars or they get their homes or their cars or whatever it is the the, the spouse of their their life or whatever uh, then they stop following God. Usually ones who are dealing with stuff every day they they're tighter with God because <laughs> there's no other answer. In Africa, I mean it's life and death literally every day in some of the areas. And are they going to eat today or are they not going to eat? They're used to fasting. I know one pastor fast 40 days regularly. So he found something that worked for him. But don't fast to get something from God. Follow his precepts, walk in that. And he might have you fast. And there's nothing wrong with fasting. But he doesn't tell you necessarily to preach that, but I'm not going to tell another preacher what he can't do in can and, and the obvious thing is, is that he's reaching the people in that area, and that's what they need to see. Okay, I'm for that. 
I pray for those people. And if they're really in there going the wrong way, and you know it's outright sin and God's talking to you, then uh, uh, praying in the spirit is the numero uno thing to do. Keeps your mind out of it. You don't get frustrated. You don't try to correct. You don't do this. And they say, hey, Lord, if, if, if this is wrong, according to my, what I'm getting in my head and your word and what I believe you're telling me, then uh, uh, please correct them. And uh, if it's me, please correct me first. Because I don't want to be thinking evil. They're a friend. And even if they're not too friendly for them, I, I choose to love them because they're a child of God. I help them out. Right. And one of the big confusions is everybody's a child of God. Right. And if you don't understand the difference and that it's not true, you're going to have a truth. I don't know that you'll ever become born again. Hmm. But why? Because everybody's going to make it, no matter if they're good or bad. Right? He went to the cross for zero because he's a loving, kind God, which is true. We don't have any concept of his love. The cross is the biggest evidence of his love. Wow. Why? That's it. Number one. So if you, is love, oh, taking care of me and doing this and doing it? No, that, that's actually part of your responsibilities. Back then when he was doing it, that's why he chose that time to come to earth. They made a covenant, an agreement, and it was for life, both sides. And they put down what they're expecting out of the, uh, out of the marriage up front in writing, and both families had to agree on it. Wow. You think if they do that, that would eliminate a whole lot of problems. Right. But, but without being born again, Meaningless, unfortunately. So what do you mean? Everybody before Jesus was uh, meaningless? No, I'm saying those that were in the hope of a Savior to save him from this, and they, by the Holy Spirit, understood that they needed a Savior, and they were put in paradise. They weren't put in hell or the holding places for those that are going to be judged yeah. and all that. And then when Jesus came, paradise emptied out. How do you know this? Because Jesus said it, Lazarus. He used the proper name. He said he looked over this gap into hell. That wasn't up in heaven. Mid heaven, triple heaven, whatever heaven you want to make it. I'm not going to go into that argument, but it's all, all the things. I can sit down and talk with you and show you in scripture. But uh, until you spend the time renewing this thing called the mind, and then you start living with a mind that is focused on Jesus and paying attention to the spirit, even if you don't understand it sometimes, which is most of the time I found out, then then you're you're you don't you're not stressed the same way. You overcome. Yeah, you got a lot of pressures and you know things you deal with, but it doesn't last forever. But you're up to it. You're ready. Without right. the Holy <laughs> oh, like like God doesn't know how to to do it. Doesn't know how to get you a job, how to provide for your family, for all your life. Everybody on the planet, even those who don't believe, the rain right. falls on the just and the unjust. Hello, we were all unjust, but mm. we somehow think when we've arrived that uh, uh, we're entitled. You want to talk about what is love? That ain't love. So, and that, no, and Jesus kept saying, I'm not going to show you a sign. He was showing them signs every second, second of every day. And they asked for it. What they wanted is a show. The difference between a miracle and a show. The problem with a show is it's a show. A miracle is something man can't do. Only God can do. And not other gods. Other gods can't do it. To those that trust him and walk with him. He'll do it for you. If he did it for Moses, he'll do it for you. If he did it for Jesus, he'll do it for you. Because that's who he is. Not because of your need. 
not because of your whatever, to show that he is God and he honors his word. And those that trust him, he honors that. He takes care of you. Well, this didn't happen. I know this was baloney. You think, you, so, something's there. Are you alive? Yeah, okay. That's a miracle. Not how hard you had it. And, you know, lost my dog on the farm and the chickens and all of that. And I'm not making fun because I've lost farms, lost businesses, sometimes by my own stupidity. Most of the time because people and things happen in life. And they will to believers. And that gives you an opportunity to overcome the world and all its needs and wants and cares. Because we're going to be with him through eternity. And we won't have these challenges. We'll have a new body, a new mind and all this. So what is it all about? God refining that love we had for him, making it genuine. Because that's the only thing that's going to make it into heaven. And it's not some walk the tightrope thing. No. It's a narrow road. It's straight. And you can just keep your eyes focused on him. And if they're focused on him, you do it upside down and wrong. But you're willing to change and do it his way. He'll even make it happen when he shouldn't make it happen. According to you didn't do this right. You didn't do that right. Right. Because what? Because the enemy always brings in. Fear, doubt, and unbelief about what? God. And you're a four-year-old, and and uh, you didn't do it perfect. And what does Dad say? He just said, wow, you're, come on, get up and let's go. That's all he wants. Yeah, Dad. Wow, that was hard. I messed up. Hi, you didn't mess up. You came along with me. Sure, you got a boo-boo. You tripped. You didn't do. Hey, what's right and what's wrong? You're You're with me. You're following me. I'll protect you and I'll show you. Okay. You'll get you'll get the gist of it. Okay. I didn't buy you a new baseball glove because you you don't know how to work it. So I got this one here and you practice hard for a couple of years and do that. And you tell me what kind of glove you want. I'll get it for you. That's our job. I give you lots of examples, but I just want to get one that I'm familiar with. So it's also we can love and help other people and uh, just keep focused on we made it to heaven. Let's stay focused and we have the seal, which is the Holy Spirit. Let's walk in the fullness of it. Are you saying if I don't have it, does it? No, no, I'm not God. He says to get it. Fine. If you don't. I just want to. Please, God. He says if, if you confess him and follow him with all your heart, and you have, and you don't speak in uh, tongues, then, then fine. You've met the requirements. Okay. But I can't preach that because that's not what Jesus said. He wanted everyone to have it. Talk about everyone who's born again. So they would have the power for him to work through them to have a victorious life and overcome and overcome again, because that's what gets people attention. Not the rhetoric, not the quotations, not the education. They said, wow, how did you do that? How can you be peaceful? How, how can you go through that, that terrible circumstance, that pain, that this, that, that and, and you come out on top? I couldn't do that. What do psychologists and psychiatrists do? They, they tell you why, they think you're the way you are. How right. does that help? You? How does that really help you? They don't give you the answer. They give you a way to avoid it or dumb you down or blow you out or whatever. Okay. I go to God. Hey, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to deal with that. How do I get out of it? He says, oh, here, do this and this and this. Just walk with me. Go to your job. Do this. Get rid of the fear and that. Give it to me. Okay. Pray in the spirit. Get happy. Why? Because dad's never wrong. Is that right? Yeah, dad. Okay. Are you alive? Yeah. Okay. 
but so-and-so is not in this and that. I'm not talking about so-and-so down the street. I'm talking about you, son, you, daughter. But this and this, no, 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 it's okay. Just follow what I do. I, I, I've been in your future, and I've already got it laid out. That's a promise in my word. And I always keep my promises. Okay. Well, you said you would do this and that. Well, you know. Things happen, and I, I do. But I'm not like a man that I lie, because when I say I'll do it, I know how to keep it. But a four-year-old doesn't understand that concept all the way. He just loves dad. He goes to dad for everything. And as he grows with them, they become friends. That's what God wants. He wants a bride. Wants a friend, doesn't want all this separation for him, because that means death for everybody who separates from him. That was the sin. So that's how you can eat of the true of good and evil and still be evil. Because it's without God, it's evil. Right. So anyhow. Right, Ryan? Yeah. So uh, and all I did was pray in the spirit for this group, and uh, that's what God gave me to uh, to do. And I've done it different ways for a long time, but it's not about me. It'll work for anybody. And I can name off not a whole lot, 10, 20 fellows who never thought they would want to have that kind of walk or whatever all different walks of life, all different cultures, all just, if you knew them before they were Christians, you would say, ain't no way. And that's the beauty about uh, the testimony of uh, Sandy and Ben, and most of the people on salt, ain't no way. But when you do, and you walk it and you're for real, you really don't have to preach anything. Your life preaches much louder than your words. But yeah, you have to use God's word. So I want to encourage those that, that everyday life is not mundane. The devil wants to make it look like that, but it can be exciting. But like a good farmer, sometimes you just got to go to sleep. You don't dig up the, the corn to see if it's coming up. And if it comes up, you don't think it's put weed killer on it because it looks like grass. You've done a few times and you know, and then after a few years, you, oh, yeah, it's just coming, it's doing this. We got to do this. We got to plow. We got to do. And, and you know when it's time to harvest and how it does it. Well, God planned all these things and gives us every walk of life how that works out. And if you trust Him, not religion, not trying to be good, not prove how holy you are and how giving and all, no, no. It's the character of God and you're following him. Because there'll be times that he'll tell you to give and times he tells you not to give. Whoa! It's really hard for me when he says not to give. Because I want to be religious. What? Well, it takes the responsibility off me. Yeah, but what? You know, if you're complaining about being broke and you're not listening to God. And then on the other side, did I get it right? Well, did, I, did I give? Yeah, okay. Should I give? Okay. Yeah. Why? You have to be in constant contact with him. And after a while, you get good at it. Sometimes if you get too good, you miss it real big because the enemy is going to side, side swipe you. But if you stay with God, no matter if he does or not, you love God. You know whether you have a lot or don't. It doesn't matter. You're going to do the best you can. And if you have that attitude, he'll put you in the best position to show everybody how great he is. And he'll elevate you spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, and relationship. And it will answer 100% of your prayers. And I don't make excuses for that. Try it. Right? Well, th there's not going to be any the debate. If, if the devil had all the power everybody says he has, we'd all be dead. But when judgment mm -hmm. comes, it's not the devil who's judging us. It's God saying, all right, you want to be God of your life? 
have at it, Christian or no. And if you're not in the spirit, good luck. Uh, no, I won't say good luck. That's the, <laughs> the, the luck is actually a, a demonic spirit. But the, but the, the point is, uh, we can't. God didn't design us to be without him. So we come back to him, we're born again, filled with the spirit. Uh, center on what we don't have or who has what, but let's just come in harmony. And but personally, we can we can pray in spirit, and that will embolden us. Uh, then that God says, "Okay, I want you to talk to the church." Well, if you're not uh, praying in tongues personally, you're not going to do it in front of the church because because I found that the God doesn't just grab you and uh, like in the Old Testament and all of that. Uh, and do it but even in the old testament they did dedicated years and years you're looking at a book 20 pages that somebody life for 30 40 years of following god in extreme hardship okay and we we have the privilege of having his spirit and you don't think that's an affront to god when when we we knowingly push it aside well, that that's walking in the spirit you don't have to be a minister to do that, but you are a minister if you're born again and filled with his spirit. Before I was filled with the spirit, I just said, God, why don't you? Miracle? And actually, I was filled with the spirit, but I didn't have knowledge and information. So I didn't believe I could do these things because if you're, you're not filled in understanding the power and how it works, it's God's spirit, and we're yielding to him to do what he wants to do. Uh, when I pray for people, they wouldn't get healed. After I received the baptism um, and the, the minister, because I was taught to obey the ministers, because they're the men of God, which I did. And he said, don't, don't speak in tongues. I didn't know. I found out after I left the church, they'd broken up. And this was a year or so later. So it wasn't just some debate we were having. It was fundamental church and Bible believing. People were saved, but they were miserable, just waiting around to die. No power, no nothing. And and I was believing the Bible, praying for people to get healed, whatever. But anyway, when I got when I with knowledge, God sent some people who gave explained it to me, and then I I got baptized again in the Holy Spirit. But this time I kept flowing in it. And when I prayed for people, hopeless situations and whatever, they got healed. Most of them instantly. Back then, there were, they had an organization called Full Gospel Businessmen Association. It was really for everybody. It wasn't just business people. And uh, I come out of a convention, and, and this, man, this Christian, I guess, started manifesting like a snake. It started slivering. I mean, you would think they were a perfect imitator of a snake, because I've never seen a person move like that, like a snake. And I was, I was starting to say, well, let's cast it out in Jesus' name. And a bunch of them grabbed me and said, no, don't do that here. You know? So, honored that and prayed. And, and then uh, later, a bunch of people with those kind of problems came and went to their houses and cast out all the stuff. And animals went crazy and all this stuff went crazy and it smelled like a toilet but that's because i just believe in god i didn't think i had any kind of ministry i just said god said you'll do these signs and these signs will follow them that believe them that believe them that believe believe and do is that you it should be all of us who claim the name of jesus and if you don't don't sweat why just turn around and do it just like salvation. You know, if you don't understand it, you might be saved, but it's going to make it harder. That's why we have fellowship. It's hard to find good fellowship, but believe me, you'll find it if you keep looking. Sometimes I had to look uh, a year or two just to find a decent church. And I hated to leave the other churches, but ultimately it turned into a, back then, because there's so little knowledge and a lot of miracles happening, uh, uh, everybody was following the miracles, and they thought when they became ministers uh, that they were God gift to tell people how to live their lives. And that, yes, we are by the Holy Spirit, 
uh, if they're breaking God's laws and adultery or whatever, yeah, fine. But not to, not to be God to them. Not to be God. And that's up to this day. You know, praying in the spirit is the best way to handle it. I found just encouraging it, and it's very debasing to the uh, the flesh with the mind and the body that's not been regenerated. It hates it because it was in control of your life before that. So I would say that's the number one thing. And by the way, when you pray in the spirit in other tongues, you can always say truth in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Okay, if you're ever concerned, if it's a a, a devil trying to edge his way, if he goes past that barrier, God's angels cook him. I don't know what they do, but they so they don't go there. Anywhere in the Bible, you'll see that they never challenged Jesus. In fact, they knew that he was the Messiah, and he told them to be quiet. So, and that's available today, real time now, because. He is, I am, not I was and it will be, I am. And he was and he will be. And he's inside of us, in his spirit. He's not becoming like us. We're becoming like him. And that's what God says, become like my son. It says it in the book of John. We're pushing into that. Wow. Great. Gospel. So just sharing with you some stuff. Because uh, the times we're in right now, right now, I know people on both sides of the fence, in finance, in, in servitude, in construction, in music, in ministry, whatever. Nobody knows what to do. They're in fear. They're scared silly. They want to follow somebody. Right for the fake one to come in and God to start his judgment. So I never forget the book of Revelation is judgment against non-believers. That's it. What about the believers? He'll make a way. But if you were really a believer, you'd go on the first round. Well, that's kind of unfair. No, I know a lot of unbelieving believers. I hear the excuses all day long, day after day, week after week, month after month, year. They're all the same. Me, I. Yeah, it's hard. I have to, I have to deal with me, put myself down. In the sense of it's trying to take the place of God. So I, uh, I stay uh, at the four-year-old level and just say, okay, God, not a stupid child, just an obedient, loving child. Okay, show me what to do, Lord. You want me to do it? I'll do it. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I got to know how to do it. You want, you want me to take over a business, do a thing? Like, okay, show me how. Show, show me what you want to do. What's the first step? What's the second step? Okay. Anyhow, just share it. Sorry. Amen. That's good. That is the only way. The spirit of God. The spirit of truth. That's not the best way. It's the only way. As written in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Nobody with the spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. Only. Only. If you have the spirit of God within you. You call Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Savior, Jesus Lord, Jesus King. It's very clear. And then we know that chapter is about the, the gifts of the Spirit. And we operate under those gifts because we are under the governance of the Holy Spirit. Simple. Who governs your life? Is it the Spirit of God? Or by default, is the Spirit of this world? There's no in between. A believer in the finished work of Christ for righteousness, forgiveness, redemption, salvation, justification, uh, justification, which is a faith, or self-effort, performance, works, which is the spirit of this world. I mean, you can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't cut it any easier, right? 
And that's just what it is. And, and, and the simplicity of that is what drives religious entities crazy. No, but you got to. Listen, I'm being governed by the Spirit of God, and he leads me and guides me into what to do. They can't understand it. Right? It's like it's so much easier for somebody to go punch into a job, right? I'm going to punch in, punch out, boom, boom. That's it. But when you become the CEO of something, you got to do more. People don't want to do that. Uh, it's easier to punch into somebody else's clock. It's easier to be told what to do. Instead, uh huh. Instead of taking ownership of your own, right? You see where the spirit is going there? And when they came out of uh, Egypt, they were so used to being told what to do that they got conformed to that state of mind. But Jesus, the Lord, which was obviously is about Jesus, has made you free from that bondage. But people want to remain in that bondage. It's easier for somebody in the suit to tell you what to do, not what to do. Instead of taking ownership on your own, being led by the spirit of truth, right? That disclaimer in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. Everything is permissible. Not everything is beneficial. And people, they have such, I mean, it's, it's, to the degree where it drives me crazy now because I, I, I see it from the other side now. I grew up under that institution that you have to do this, do that. You have to do this and do that. You have to do this. It'll drive you crazy. I can't do that. You know why? Because nobody could. That was the whole conversation in Acts 15. They wanted to put that yoke on the Gentiles, the non-Jews, which that's for another topic because I'm neither. I was chosen to him before they were Gentiles and Jews. So I, I am in Christ, and that's that. That's who I am, right? But the religious entities wanted to put that yoke on the uh, on the new converts, for lack of better. I, I don't like that word because uh, there was a conversion, but not on the converts. No, new believers, okay? Um and they wanted to put those requirements on them. And then Peter, under the unction of the Holy Ghost, said, wait, 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 wait. Our forefathers couldn't keep these things. You guys can't keep these things. Now you want to put that pressure on us and them when none of us could keep it? That's why the Messiah had to come, the prophesied Messiah, so that he could atone for yours, mine, and theirs? And you're still trying to put that yoke on them? Hear the gospel and believe. Acts 15, chapter 7. I mean, uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 7. Hear the gospel and believe. Believe on him. And we can only believe when we're under the governance of the Spirit of God. And we, and we see the division now. People still want to be so religious, but they don't want to be representatives of the kingdom of heaven. I always say a kingdom mentality will always infuriate a religious mind. We're kingdom kids. Right? If, if we look the way, if, if we look at the way the kingdoms operate in the natural realm, times that infinity times infinity, okay? We are from a kingdom of heaven. It's not that we're beating people down, but we operate under that, that 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 royal priesthood. Amen? We operate under that kingship that Christ has made available. And ultimately, that's what God had in mind the whole time. Otherwise, he wouldn't give Adam that dominion that he gave to him. Amen? That dominion who has domain. Right? Who has authority? Who has rule? Who has government? That's what domain means. So it's not that we just want to do what we want to do. No, I'm under the governance of the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. And we could only know these things 
if we are governed by him. Because whatever you give your attention to will influence you and then govern your life. Why everybody else has already conformed to what's going on. And when you conform to this world, you operate in fear. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, Lord, this is the other side of that coin. Okay, Lord, I know what's going on. This, this is something that was prophesied. I see it. You have led me to the scriptures to see it. Okay. And he just said, be still. Be still. I'm God. Do you trust me? Yeah, I trust you. Okay, well, so what's the beef? <laughs> Oh, my goodness, man. The simplicity of that is what drives people crazy. Well, you have to go do something. You have to go and do this. And you, Well, the Spirit of God hasn't really told me what to do yet. I'm waiting on him. And trust me, he will give you the marching orders. All right, son. All right, daughter. I need you to go here, such and such, such and such. Whether you're going to get a, 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 a J-O-B, or you're going to meet somebody that, that's going to sow a love gift into you. Either or, however the Lord wants to do it. There's nothing impossible with God. You know? Just like when, when Barnabas got, got, uh, got tugged, the Lord tugged his heart. Sell everything and put it to the apostles, uh, bring it to the feet of the apostles and distribute. Either or. However the Lord wants to do it, our part is to believe him. That's it. See, but religiosity wants you to move when they say move. Oh, well, you got to go. And, and the Lord has told me that you're going to, well, he ain't tell me. Uh, uh, well, uh, he hasn't told me. It sounds good. Sounds great. Sounds awesome. But he hasn't, he hasn't revealed that to me. Now, somebody could echo what the Lord has already told you, right? And somebody could give you a word of confirmation. Well, I feel the Lord has, yeah, yeah, he actually did. Uh, the day or the night before, he, he showed me that this is, okay, so you are the comfort. Yeah, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But the simplicity of that, and that's what has been uh, wrecking people's lives if that makes sense, you know, not being governed by his spirit. We now serve in the newness of the spirit, not the onus of the letter, right? That's very clear. I mean, how much clearer can that get? We now serve in the newness of the spirit, not the onus of the letter. Now, does that mean we just do what we want? No, absolutely not. We're in a covenant, and I love my groom, and me as the bride, Christ being the groom, I'm going to do what he says to do, because he's looking out for my benefit. And like I shared earlier, there's a disclaimer found in 1 Corinthians 6, 12, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse 23, everything is permissible. <laughs> You could do what you want to do, boss man. But if what you do will not benefit you in any way, you got to think about it. I love that disclaimer. I call it the disclaimer in, 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 the, in the Bible. Because you could do what you want. You could believe or not believe. God has made everything available to you through the perfect finished work of Christ. Now is your part to believe it. It's our part to convey the good news, that message. Sweetheart, sir, in the midst of, of chaos, in the midst of, 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 of your, your, your pain, your past afflictions, Christ died for you to make you free from that. The truth makes you free. This is the truth. He loves you. He became the perfect sacrifice on your behalf. Whether you would have believed it or not, he did it anyway. And right now, as I'm sharing this truth, will you believe it? That pain, that sin, 
that you're in that you feel like you cannot, you, 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 you so deep in the pit that you feel can nobody save you. Well, he went down to the deepest, okay? And he called you up out of that pit. Can you believe that today? And whatever pain is over that person, every time that I minister to somebody, or you can see it in their eyes. Their eyes start to water, and you know they're receiving it. You know their heart is receiving everything you're saying because you're conveying the word of God to them. And that heart that was once hardened is becoming good soil, as written in Matthew 13, the parable of the soil. We're sowing the good word of God. And you can see it. It's not about do's and don'ts. Well, you know, you got to cut your hair first. You got to get some new clothes. And then maybe. That's condemnation. We haven't been given the ministration of condemnation because the letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Read that whole chapter. It'll blow your mind. Take it line by line, precept by precept. Very clear. We've been given the ministration of reconciliation. Catalago in the Greek, exact point of change. Where Adam forfeited in Christ Jesus, it is restored. It is reestablished. It is reconciled. Catalazo in the Greek. Simple. We go back to our original existence in Christ. Ephesians 1, 4. I was chosen in him before the foundation of the world. People don't get that. I mean, that is so before. Before there was Genesis 1, 1. Before there was Adam and Eve. Before there was Noah. Before there was uh, Japheth, Ham, and Shem. Before there were Israelites. Before there were Gentiles. I existed in him. It's all about Jesus Christ, man. I don't care where I was born or what. I'm here. Representing him. That's what it's about. That's why I, the Lord, when he showed me that back in 2014, this is about your identity, son. Once you know your identity in me, can't nobody tell you any different. I don't care how many titles they have before their name. I don't care what, what congregation they belong to. Now, if they have my spirit in them, they, they're going to see that. But once you know who you are in Christ and that you know you are from a kingdom, my goodness, man. I'm going to read this. Um, it's, in, it's off of uh, uh, Psalms 1. 45, verse 13. <clears throat> thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion, and thy dominion, rada, in the Hebrew, power, rule, reign, govern, to govern. That's what he gave Adam. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion, rada, endures throughout all generations. And in Christ Jesus, we have that because we are from a kingdom that will not be shaken. I am from a kingdom. I am, I am not from a, 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 a religious institution. I am not of a denomination. And it, I mean, I grew up in a denomination. That's fine. But who, who do you identify with? That denomination? Or Christ. Simple. You're awesome because you're first Baptist or because you are in Christ. You're super awesome because you are assemblies of God or because of who you are in Christ and what the finished work of Christ has made available to you. And down the line. Go down the line. Because the truth only comes through the spirit of truth. And if we operate under the spirit of truth, which is the spirit of God, which is Holy Spirit, which is the power that John the Baptist prophesied about. Yeah, I'm going to baptize you in water, but he who comes is going to baptize you in fire. <laughs> That's where we find that power. 
because the same power that raised up Jesus for our justification, Romans 4.25, Romans 5.1, justified by faith and we have peace with God. That same power that raised up Jesus dwells in me, dwells in them that believe. You either believe or you don't believe. It's just that simple. And whatever you believe will be revealed with the words you speak. Are you kingdom kids or are you ministers of Satan? Just that simple. I know that that will cause a lot of religious people to tear their clothes off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get a vision of Jeremiah when, when Jeremiah was preaching to them and declaring the words of the Lord. That's for me. Tearing up your clothes. That was the occupation to have back then. Be, be a tailor or a seamstress. They were tearing up their clothes all the time. Because <laughs> they could not receive the word of God through his prophets. And they were prophesying about the coming Messiah. It's throughout the whole entire Bible. The Old Testament is Christ concealed. The epistles, the New Testament, is Christ revealed. It's no longer a mystery if you operate under the spirit of God because now we've been baptized in fire. And we cannot call Jesus a curse if we operate under the spirit of truth, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. That is the only way. It's paramount. And it's still there. It's still a choice. But when you, when you, when you show them the love of God, through the perfect finished work of Christ. It's hard for anybody. I'm telling you, I am telling you. Psalms 34, 8. Once you taste and see that the Lord is good, once you taste and see for yourself and you experience him for yourself and you encounter his presence for yourself, you will not come out the same. You will not come out the same. You will not. But it's only the true gospel that does that, not a perverted gospel. That's a substitute gospel. That, that is religiosity. And when we are governed by the Spirit of God, we're going to do accordingly. Like God wouldn't institute something that's going to make us fall deeper into sin than, than we were already, right? Why would he institute grace when that's going to keep us in deeper bondage to sin? That doesn't make sense. Well, grace, grace is just going to give them a license to sin. Really? You think God is, is that? <laughs> that he will institute something. No, grace is the empowerment that keeps you from falling back into that pit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for your spirit. Thank you, Father God, for the finished work of Christ that has reconciled us back to our original existence in Christ. For these three bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And these three bear witness here on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. We are representatives of that truth. We agree with the Holy Ghost. We declare what the Holy Ghost gives us to speak because he is the spirit of truth. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of opposition, in the midst of hindrances that come our way, we're going to continue to speak the truth. We'll be like the Jeremiah's. We'll be like the Elijah's and the Elisha's. Doesn't matter. I'd rather be loved by God than liked by many. I thank you, Father, for your perseverance. Thank you, Father, for having the joy. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. Nehemiah 8.10. Every prophet you, you, you 
you rose, you, you raised up to deliver the word, they persecuted. And that's the exact same thing you wrote in John 14 and John 16. In this world, we're going to face persecution. We're going to face trials and tribulations because of who we are in you. But be of good cheer. For I overcame the world. And in you, my Lord God, we overcome because we believe. As written in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 through 5. And to them that believe, to them that overcome, I will grant them to sit at my table. We are seated with the King of Glory. In the spiritual realm, we are seated. We still operate here in the natural realm, in this earth suit, but this earth suit is coming off. We're going to take off this vile, vile body, vile, and put on our glorious body, fashioned after you, my Lord King. In the beautiful, mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. Hallelujah. I don't think we had a, an opening prayer. Um, does, does Raymond have something to share? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful morning that you have made, Father. Bless this day that you have made. Thank you for, for every breath that you have gave us. Thank you for every uh, blood that's flowing in, through our uh, veins, is flowing warm in our bodies. Thank you, Father, for the food you have gave. Thank you for the house that you allow us to live in or the apartment or even an RV. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the car or even sometimes a bus pass that we have transportation. Thank you, Lord, for just for the clothes we are wearing are still clean, are still getting clean and not missing and not ripped or afraid or, or have any other type of things that's making us not wear it, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the shoes that are fitting on our feet. They are still intact. Thank you, Father, for everything. Lord, as we go on this day, watch over us continually. Thank you for even watching over us yesterday. Thank you for watching over us every hour and every minute. Father, take control of our minds and our hearts as we go on this day. Father, I rebuke the enemy because he tried to use anything against us to make us be disencouraged. But thank you for your encouragement for us to keep going, keep fighting a good fight of faith. Thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Father, uh, help those that are sick, those that are in the hospital, those are in prison that don't understand. And those that do understand, Father, we pray that they will continue fighting a good fight of faith and prayer, as well as hymns, as well as staying away from sin and praying for others. In Jesus' name, thank you for everything, Lord. I pray for our pastors and all the other members of the, of the one body that we stay strong in you, stay strong, stay fighting a good fight and reading your word constantly. And allow us to continue being a light that you put in us, your light, Lord, and not ours, that we are short to other people that we are around, that they will want to know you and give their life to you. They will un understand that what battle that they are in is not a physical battle, but a spiritual battle. In Jesus' name, on, this last, on these last days, Father, give us the strength to witness to other people in these last days, Father. Through our lifestyle, through the words we say, or any type of way of witnessing, in Jesus' name. Thank you for everything. 
anybody that's sick or anybody that's going through anything, Father, take control, Father, over their situation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. It's a done deal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Raymond. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, pulling up to a doctor's appointment yesterday, and I was parking my car, and I saw this, what looked to be maybe a homeless person. Mm -hmm. Suddenly kind of showed up out of nowhere from my perspective. I'm not saying he appeared, but he suddenly I saw him sitting on a ledge of a of a sign for the for the complex. And he looks at me and he looks up in the sky and he says, Do you think it's gonna rain? And I looked at him yesterday. The, the Holy Spirit came over me to tell that guy, yes, it is going to rain and it's going to come from Jesus. And he looked at me and I said, do you know him? And he said, maybe. And I said, well, he's coming. God bless you. I got to go. And that was the gist of the whole encounter. But as I look back and think about that yesterday, it was it was the Holy Spirit that that overcame me at that one moment because I was going to walk right past him. But had he not said something and then had not the Holy Spirit urged me, probably the best word I could describe it, to say something to him. And then I just listened to what the father wanted me to say to that guy. and. Um, they both wanted me to testify about Jesus coming soon. And so it was a, a quick, godly encounter with someone who was in my, in my perspective for 20 seconds and then gone. And so I had that one opportunity, like we've talked about, that one opportunity, a 20 or 30 second window to, to say something to bring glory to Jesus. And that, that was my encounter yesterday. And listening to Joe, it's kind of prompted me to share that with you to maybe make it a little bit more practical what it means to encounter and go with the power of the Holy Spirit, to know that it's him that's urging you. And it's not just maybe your own personal desire to say something, but it's the actual person of the Holy Spirit empowering you to give glory to, to the Father and to the Son. Amen. 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 I was hoping. So God bless you, Raymond. I, I love that. That's, that's a, a constant prayer and that every day, Lord, you would give us people to minister to. Right. Every day. Every day. Amen. Amen. As I say, man, as uh, one thing that I've noticed. Um, is that when it comes to saying something to people, sometimes it's the people you least expect who respond the biggest or the people that you've known for a while and until you've actually, you know, challenged a little bit or said a few things that uh, just by your character, you know, having the spirit in you, uh, they know you're not a, they know you're not a threat and they know that, uh, that when that moment comes and you say the right thing, it flips a switch on them and they turn on like a light bulb. And that's happened to me in my life, just not, you know, with faith in God, but with other things in my life where people said key things to me that got me to make decisions in my life that actually changed the direction of my life, usually for the better. You know, I've never had a negative one that I'm aware of. So <clears throat> in the same manner, I think that's something of the Holy Spirit in itself, whether we realize it in those moments or not, that's God's favor, God's direction. God's kind of patting us in the butt as a little kids saying, okay, go over there, go over there and play, you know, in life. And, uh, you know, and that's a good thing. And I think that, um, especially in this hour, 
you know, we're not we're not necessarily required to convert people because they won't convert unless they want to. But I think what tribulation is is really God's intense faith faithfulness to get His people to recognize where they really are, what status they really are in, and He's going to give them like, hey, you're you know what, you're in the twelfth round with Mike Tyson right now, and there's only one way you're making it out of this, <laughs> you know, so. You know, it's like, you know, the devil being not that Mike Tyson's the devil, but you get what I'm saying, that you're in a brutal battle here in a brutal fight. And, and the reality of it is, is you're not you're going to either leave the, the ring, the victor or you're going out dead. And, you know, people need to have these seeds planted in their hearts and their heads, because most of the people you see today will go through tribulation, will. And, and that's unfortunate. It's sad. But that's that's the true love of the father. He chastens the ones he loves. So he is really pleading with all of his of his creation of mankind to to choose him. And a lot of them have not, even the ones that call themselves or self-title themselves Christian or Episcopalian, Lutheran, Methodist, Catholic, Mormon, <clears throat> none of that, none of, <clears throat> none of that matters whatsoever. And, uh, you know, it really comes down to is that deep personal relationship with the father. You know, and I, I can't stress that enough, especially being the guy that wants to talk about all the French subjects. And the Lord told me, hey, you know, I, I gave you the mind to understand these things. I've let you experience some of those things. Now I need you to tell them about me. The hour is too late, you know. So that being said, you know, that's that's just our job is to go out there, plant those seeds, let God, you know, let God water them, let God grow them on those people. And then you might actually get to see send them, some of them sprout like I've been fortunate enough to see. So. Um, which is humbling in itself. So, but anyhow, just uh, like just like what Ryan's saying, I know this: when the Holy Spirit cues you to do something, just do it. And you know, people might call me cavalier, rude, or blunt, but the reality of it is, is that's what the Lord uses in me to talk to people. I, I just try to, straight up don't care what they think of me when I tell them something. I'm going to tell you, listen, this is what you need to understand. I'm going to plant the seed with you because once I tell you, you're not going to remove it from your head. You can't. You know, it's like I lick my finger, dip it in the seeds and poke it through their head. There you go. There's one you can't get rid of, you know, you, and that way they can never say I never knew because they heard you say it. And God, just just as, you know, when that rich man was sitting in hell and was asking uh, for the, the man in heaven, the, the beggar that was sitting at his door to give him, you know, dip his finger in water and get put on his tongue. You know, no, that ain't happening. Well, go warn my family, go warn my brothers. You know what I mean? You know, we don't we don't even want it to get to that level where it's too late. And I just think that, um, you know, all I can say to the father, you know, and this is me again being just Nate. This is I'm a different flavor of ice cream. But the reality of it is, is like, I don't want to say to the father, I'm sorry I failed you on one of your kids. I didn't like him or her. And so I didn't say nothing. Right. And and I say this because I'm just being transparent and clear and honest. It doesn't mean I have a hard heart. It just means that I'm a person that has a struggle in a certain area. And I think we all have our struggles. That's part of being a human. And the reality of it is, is I don't like people. I like individuals. I absolutely love individuals. Some of them have been very corrupt people that I've met in my life. People that, but I knew there was a, there was a form of truth and honesty in them. And, and I, I even saw a man that was my dad's age who was a complete cheat and philanderer and drug addict. I knew in the gym, very successful businessman. And years later, after surviving cancer, let me tell you, that man sang a whole different tune. That man was faithful to his wife. And that was the first thing out of his mouth. Oh, I've got a good relationship with my wife. We're doing really good. You know, I mean, I, that man, and his Gary, I never thought I would have seen that come out of that man's face. Very generous man, even when he's being bad. But the point I'm making is you, you never know who you're going to deal with. Um, you never know when the, the Holy Spirit cues you up, says, open your mouth, then open your mouth. You don't have to be a holy roller. You don't have to be a Bible thumper. You don't have to be poetic or religious sounding. Just open your mouth because it might you might be the type of person that happens to reach that type of person where no one else can. The right moment, the right time and the right angst from the Holy Spirit, you know, and I think that's really key. And um and I think what we need to do is just be more responsive in our person. Like, you know, when the Holy Spirit's tapping you on the shoulder, or the Lord's showing up in your in the room with you, you're sitting in your living room, whatever it is, sitting in the car. And if you have a uh, relationship with the Father, you're going to know his presence. <laughs> like he always reminds me, 
Like when I challenge a spirit, he's like, hey, Nate, you already know my voice. You're not spiritually tone deaf. You can challenge once in a while, but you know my sheep know my voice. Would the devil ask you to do something good? No, probably want it. Absolutely. You know my voice. You know, and, and what I'm simply saying is, is that we're all in this battle. We all have our weaknesses, but we also have our strengths and our gifts. And um, so I would I always encourage people, don't be afraid to say something to folks, but don't be upset if you don't see the results you need. You just might be planting a seed, you know, and that way God can say to that that person when the time comes, I gave you these 10,000 opportunities in your lifetime and you refuse them all. Because there are going to be people that reject him. There are going to be people that say, I don't want what you got from me. No, thanks. I want what I want. That's the brutal, hardcore reality of it. It's very sad and very heartbreaking. It, But at the same time, there are those out there that will have given the opportunity and saying, hey, this is the creator. This is how much he loves you. You know, that love that he, you know that he has for you will come through in that message in whatever format it is. And I say this because I, I, I got to see this on my trip with my family. And my family members don't discipline their children. They, they say they love them. I find that hard to believe. I find that a complete contradictory statement. You know, so, you know, I, I would say that God chastens the ones. God will discipline the ones he loves. And I hope you've all found discipline in your life. I all hope that you found the, ch the chastening of the father, because if you haven't, you're, in the, you're not where you need to be. I have, and I continue to do so, and I welcome it because correction is okay. If it leads me to the truth, if it leads me to being a better person, if it leads me to be in the presence of the Father, if it allows me to rest between the shoulders of the Lord, then I want that. And if, if, chasing, him, if chas, chasing him gets me there, then so be it. Boot camp, boot camps for the military, gets you to become a good sailor, a good soldier, a good Marine. Whatever it is you're doing, it's there to prepare you is it hard? Yes, it can actually suck at times. Is it fun? Most of the time, not. You can't wait to get out of boot camp. But once you do, once you do, you're ready to begin. So, and, and, and it just adds that, I'll leave it at that. But I just think that, you know, when the spirit cues you up to do something, just do it, you know, and be bold. Don't be apologetic and do it in the flavor of ice cream that you are. Because I believe me, when I, I get, I don't appeal to most people. But what I do know, the evidence, I, gosh, I ask God for, I don't ask for signs anymore. I want evidence because <laughs> evidence is what stands in a court of law, right? That's what matters. And I ask the Lord for evidence. And the evidence has been this. My family has said to me and other friends, man, I thought you were crazy. I didn't know what planet you were living on. And all the stuff you've been talking about all these years is coming true. You know, once they realize that evidence, whatever it is that you've talked about, once you see the reality of the, you know, the evidence of what you said, then, then they have to acknowledge if they truly have a heart for truth, which is God. God is truth. He is the establishment of truth. If, if they truly have a heart for truth, which is good, they don't have to know Christ yet, but if they really have a heart for truth, and that's what they're seeking, they will find it. That's a promise that God made to me when I read that on the Bible about truth and, you know, those who seek it shall find it. And, um, and I believe that. And I've actually seen that happen. And so um, just remember, keep doing what you're doing. Do it in the flavor of rice cream you are. I know I could probably even rub some of you guys wrong, which, you know, that's not my issue. It's yours. <laughs> but you guys have rubbed me wrong. Guess what? Not your issue. It's mine. And that's just the reality of it. And it's because, you know, we're, at, we're still all grown. We're all learning still. And we'll be learning till the day we die, whether it be at 20 years old or 120 years old. So, you know, I just want to keep you guys motivated, keep doing what you're doing. And if you're listening, even through your mistakes or your sin struggles or whatever it may be, the thorn in your side, as Paul called it, you know, keep doing what you're doing because God is perfect. And uh, if we keep leaning on him, that perfection shines through us. But we will not do perfection under our own power. I don't believe that's possible. You can't know perfection unless you know the Lord and have the Holy Spirit in you. So don't let that be an excuse as to why not to open your mouth. Amen. Amen, bro. Amen. From the Holy Spirit.
instead of me worrying about it or thinking about it, this analysis paralysis that so much of the body of Christ is going through, has gone through, I, and I'm seeing it. And I was sharing with a brother on Sunday after church, and I, and I brought that up, and he says, yeah, that's me. And so we prayed about it. But, you know, you, you get information, you, you, you get some type of what you think is revelation, and you, you sit there and you think about it, and you worry about it, you fret about it, you chew on it, and you, you're sitting there wasting time trying to figure out if what you heard was from the Holy Spirit instead of immediately just going to God with it, giving it to him, and going forth and, and, and taking what you heard and putting it into action. The body of Christ becomes stagnant when, 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 we're, when we get this analysis paralysis. I, I see that a lot. But, you know, in warfare, hesitation can win or lose you the battle. So spiritual warfare, no different. If the Holy Spirit tells you to pray, to put something on your heart, pray. Do it. Body of water. Because there's a battle that needs to be fought. I think Joe talked about that. That you, you could be praying in the spirit but you're you're helping a baby be delivered on the other side of the earth amen hmm. yeah, let me pray i'm gonna pray this father in the name of jesus i pray that god we would we would be men of action in our personal time with you we would not hesitate we would just do Obedient servants. We trust in you, Lord. We trust in you to lead us. And if we truly trust, then we, we won't question when you speak. Us. Help us to trust in that. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And, and there is a balance, right, to what what you were sharing. Um, we don't we don't like I I stopped doing that. You know, uh, going back and forth with somebody that um, is just reprobate. They don't they they believe what they want to believe, and that aspect of it. Yeah, I have left alone. But if somebody is, is somebody is, is teaching and preaching a false gospel, I think I truly do believe that we have to address it if if we are asked, right? Because I'm not getting into no fight that you know that the Lord has not sent me to fight. But as a yeah. judge, as a judge, we should address it if it comes if it comes across our table. So I agree. To the point where, yeah, we can't. There's a lot of people that 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 make life about chastising everybody else and what they're doing wrong. But then, what are you doing? You you talking? You 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 gossiping about what everybody else is doing wrong? So that aspect, yeah, that aspect, absolutely. And I think that's yeah. what you were kind of referring to. There's yeah, people that, that have. There's people that have uh, uh, thousands of followers because people love gossip. Oh, what what he gonna share now? Who said what now? Ah, uh, see, told you, told you he was right. So that aspect, yeah. But as a judge, which is what we are, right? We're gonna judge the world and judge the angels. If it comes across our table, oh no, no, no. This this is this is not the gospel, right? So there is a balance there, and 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 again, it's all what the spirit of God leads us to do. Right, because sometimes he tells me, "Don't, don't say nothing. Don't let, let it go. I'm gonna deal with that." Or, you know, they they made up their mind. Don't, don't, don't even waste your time. Pretty much, right? right. Because you can never. They're, they're so delusional, right? Yeah. And they are in such rebellion that they will never receive nothing that that we have to share. But then the Lord knows who who has a good uh, soil to receive the word of God. But then there's some that, that just want to, inter, 
they just want to keep you entangled and, and, and back and forth, and that's when you get in the flesh, and they, they kind of tick you off, and then, like, you like, so those are agents of Satan sent to, to keep you busy, and so there's a balance, and um, the balance is when the Spirit of God tells you to address something that comes across your table as a judge and a priest and a king of God and a, an ambassador for Christ, you address it accordingly, like any judge would. So there's a little balance there, but I think that's probably what you were referring to. There's a lot of people that that's their ministry, gossiping about how everybody else has messed up. Well, hold up, old boy. How about you? Right? Instead of praying for them, how about you uplift them? Right? You see, you see the difference. But then you see the person's heart and why? Why? And those are the ones that have thousands of subscribers, right? Because people just want to gossip about, oh, who fell now? Ah, uh, see, I knew it. I knew it. You don't know what that person went through, right? How about that? Let's do that. So I pray for those ministers and those pastors that have faced something. They've allowed something to infiltrate their hearts and their household and their families, and we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because they've been called. Many have been called. A lot of them, they call themselves. But many have been called to be stewards of the word of God. But they've allowed something to infiltrate their hearts. So, Lord, right now, speak to their hearts. Reveal yourself to them in such a way that they will know that their ways were tarnished by something and an influence that they allowed to come into their hearts. Quicken their spirit right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. That's my part. Amen. Hallelujah. Yep. Amen, brother. Good stuff. Yeah, always balance. Always balance. And praise God. Uh, I believe I can say a little something when it comes to balance. My, my focus is, as, as I'm thinking, you know, scriptures are going through, through my heart. Not my head, I'm, I'm not, I mean on my own understanding, but because I'm led by the Spirit and the Spirit is talking to us, and, and how sensitive would one need to be to fully receive the vital wisdom of God or direction of God from the Holy Spirit? What does it take for us to, 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 to exercise the sensitivity needed to really discern that it's God speaking to us? That's what's so important in prayer. That's so important. This is part of the relationship. But I'll tell you one thing, what will hinder us, as my brother was speaking about stagnation, what will hinder a person is when you entertain religious, religiosity. So the practices that, that, that's really operating in, you, in your own understanding versus the consciousness of God who's giving you the true understanding. My thing is this. I was reading the scripture between Adam and Christ. I don't know if it's Hebrews, but what it's saying, it says through one man, Adam, death reigns from Adam unto Moses, right? And under that, many, from that one transgression, many were shaken, sin, and born in iniquity. Many were, were stagnant before they even was a believer. But I'm just saying, because of Christ, I just have so much to be grateful for when it comes to reverence, when it comes to respect for God and what he did for us all that's given us life. Because through the one man, Jesus, who repaired the breach, through the one man, Jesus, that allowed us communion back to the Father, through the one man, Jesus, that regenerated our spirit so we can communion and can walk in the spirit and can receive from the Holy Spirit. But are we taking for granted, if we really respect and fear, are we taking for granted with religion, what religion would do is get you caught up. What religion would do is distract you. It's like when Christ said, it is finished on the cross. And that, and, and as you read in the scripture, that veil was rent in the temple. There's no more partition. There's no more wall dividing us from the love of God. There's no more separation from us into the holy of holies. As we are the temple, as, a, as God resides in the holy of us, and we are the body of Christ as we reside in the holy, holy of Jesus. That one 
one man Jesus made this possible. So through the one man death reigned. Why let death? So if I respect and reverence my God, and I have His life, that's the platform we work from. His life, walking in the Spirit. His life, allowing His love to be dispensed into us. Why am I spinning on a on a a a, a, a hamster wheel, going round and round and round in religious practices? which is really acting as if uh, I'm still allowing death to reign from the one man Adam. When now I have access to the riches and resources and uh, resources of God's economy. When we read in Ephesians, it speaks of us uh, receiving the, the commonwealth of Israel. Not the people, but in the person, Jesus Christ. The commonwealth is the riches and resources. The commonwealth is a citizenship. We have we have legal rights and citizenship because of the one man's uh, death. We have life. The one man's death, Jesus on the cross. We have life, and we ain't got no time for 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 stagnation. We ain't got no time for religiosity. We ain't got no time when there's still sheep that need to come into the fold. All the resources we have in Jesus. That's why the word says study to seek ourselves for proof. And when we study is how we really gain the sensitivity. When we study that word, the word of God is that water, the washing of the water. The word of God is why I have reverence and, and, and respect for God. I'm not in fear as if death was reigning. I'm not in fear dwelling and, and, and battling over people about uh, once safe, always safe. I ain't got no time for that foolishness. I'm too busy trying to be sensitive to what the life instructions are. I don't want to be caught up in religion. I don't want to be caught up in, in an impersonal relationship with the world, thinking I'm holified, thinking I'm sanctified or whatever, playing, playing church, being religious, spinning my wheels, relying on others, uh, like praise God for leadership in the church. But more praise unto that one man, Christ, the last man, who is the true leader, the shepherd to the leadership of the church, a co-shepherd to the shepherd Jesus. I got no time for religion. And it would take for me not to get mad at the church or the leadership if they may preach hellfire and all of that. Because, like my pastor said, don't you read your Bible? So I just thank you, Father God, that in reading the Bible, you brought to remembrance to me who you, Lord Jesus, you brought life. And in this life is wisdom and instruction. And in that wisdom and instruction, there's no stagnation. There's no fear in love, but faith in Jesus Christ. And so the balance is go to church, receive from the co-shepherd, but go to your prayer closet and receive from the shepherd. That's my balance for today. Because in that shepherd, he can, whatever the, the leadership of the church, let that be in agreement with the leadership of the word. Let that be in agreement and let me be honorable and respectful to study that word and it receive. That's medicine. That's medicine. That's medicine. That's the daily bread that uh, they collected uh, daily, the manna that was portrayed in Egypt. We, I'm coming out of Egypt, we have the daily bread of the word. And we don't want to get enough on Sunday to carry us up through the week. Like they try to double up on one day and that stuff turned into maggots. We we wanna we wanna collect this bread every day. We wanna get this word every day. We wanna honor and respect our God who made available by his death on the cross for us to be able to receive this word and allow the Holy Spirit to translate for us. In Jesus' name, I just thank you, Father God, your death that brought life for us all. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your way. Your way that brings wisdom into our hearts. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that the very things that they did by the letter, Father God, we do in life. We do by heart because you've written those vital laws. You've written your high standards of love on our hearts. Because of your death on the cross, we're able, more than able, because we're available and you are the able one living in us. So I just thank you, Father God, this morning. I thank you for the dog men. I thank you for accountability. I thank you that we come together. We are real through touching in the word. Well, God, I just thank you that you are the confirmation when other people are saying the same scriptures you are saying. What a mighty confirmation, Father God, that your love lives in us all. 
And when we come together and we agree as those touches, it's a confirmation that the same God, that same omnipresent God that lives in all the soul brothers, that same one lives in me. And we can come together. We can iron sharpens iron. We can come and, and receive this vital instruction. We can come together and receive the rainbow revelation. We can come together and receive the truth that brought freedom to, to those that were in bondage to sin through that one man, Christ. Through the one man, many shall live. Lord, I just thank you for your word says that you were that one grain of wheat that went into the ground and resurrected to produce many fruit. And I am one of them. And I just thank you for the God for your sacrifice. I thank you for the God for your unselfish sacrifice that you died so many will live in Jesus' name. We ain't got time for stagnation in Jesus' name. Let's find the balance in Jesus' name. Let's embrace this love and express it so we can bring other sheep to the fold. We ain't got no time for religion. Let's go out there and do the greater work that, that God died for us to do because we want to do it, not because we have to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to be thankful. I just want to say God looks good. God sounds good on all the salt men this morning. God looks good on you. So we're going to say amen. We're going to have what we say. We're going to call out Jesus and everyone. That's Jesus talking. Lord's mouth, Jesus' words. Amen. Amen. Um. There's a couple of things that have been um, in my heart for the past week and a half. Uh, the gender euphoria. And um, there is a difference. There's two different events. Uh, the coming of the Lord and the twinkling of an eye moment. And a lot of people are still confused about those two topics and that that's the main play or, or that's the mainstream topic right now you know uh as written in genesis 1 the very first chapter of the word of god god created male and female end of story right xy chromosomes for for male xx chromosomes for female that should end the debate right but this Babylonian systematic world wants to convey this message that there's, ah, there's 500 genders. Really? <laughs> Where you get 500 from? You know? And if we're going to be ambassadors for Christ and the constitution of heaven is the word we speak. <clears throat> that should be what uh, constitutes our life, right? But there's a lot of people conforming. There's a lot of people doing that. And very clear, again, Genesis 127, male and female. <clears throat> also, there's a difference within the structure of the pelvic bone in the male and in the female. The pelvic bone, see, I can't even, the pelvic bone, hallelujah, is wider in the female structure. Why? Because they're called to bear kids. They're called to have menstrual cycles. They're called to give birth. So that right there, two genders. There is no difference, right? There's two. That's the way God established it. That's the way it is where he declared it. That's the way it is right now. He declared the end of the beginning. That should be the end of that. And you know what? Again, that disclaimer, if that's what you want to be, it doesn't. It doesn't matter what you cut off, what you add, what you, what you, what you. Uh, it doesn't matter. What you subtract, what you divide, what, whatever. If you have X Y chromosomes, you are a male. If you have X X chromosomes, you are a female. End of story. Next topic. <laughs> See that they don't want to give me no mic because I go up there and, and you know. Um, you bet. The, you bet. The you. difference, <laughs> Amen. Uh, the difference between when Jesus returns and touches back down on the Mount of Olives, 
as prophesied in Zechariah 14.4. He will step on the Mount of Olives. Boom! That's his return. And in Acts 1.11, when the angel is telling the, the, the disciples, men of Galilee, why you gaze up at this same Jesus that left? That's the way he's going to come back. When he stepped on the Mount of Olives. And it's written in Revelation 19 that we, the wives, right, the wife, no longer just the bride because the uh, betrothal has been consummated. We, we partook of the drink of the vine, right, the fruit of the vine in our father's kingdom. So we come back as the wife. When he steps down on the Mount of Olives, we come back with him. And people are still confused about the twinkling of an eye moment and when Jesus returns. And there's a difference. His glorious appearance, his blessed hope, Titus 2.13. Colossians 3.4, when our Lord appears and we appear with him in glory. When we appear with him in glory. And 2 Timothy 4.8 declares that to them that love his appearing, they're going to receive a crown of righteousness. Okay? It's a difference. So that's why a lot of people, and I bring this, these two topics up because there's, there's a, 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 a deception, right, that declares that we have to endure, that he will not come for the church until the end of the tribulation period. No, that's wrong. And that's what I was saying earlier, that when something like that comes across our table, we have to address it accordingly as a priest, as a judge, as a king. In Christ Jesus, we have to address it. And I didn't go back and forth with this fellow, but I did put it in, in such a way that, okay, you either receive it or you don't. Because there's a lot of people that have been so deceived that they don't know and they don't go back and read it for themselves. As written in Acts 17, uh, 11. Uh, speaking about uh, Berea, right? That's where the term Berean comes. You got to go in and settle the word of God in your heart. Go back. Allow the spirit of God to reveal it to you so when these things come up as a judge, you could address it accordingly. Because a lot of people are still confused about when Jesus returns and the twinkling of an eye moment. As written in Second Corinthians fifteen fifty one through 53. It's two separate events. It's not the same event. And people are still in that Delusion, okay? Acts seventeen eleven. These were noble men. These were noble. These were more noble, excuse me, than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So let's not just because somebody has a a a, a title in front of the name. Well, Pastor said it, so it must be so. No, no, no. Go back and read it for yourself to see. It's two separate events. In these two top, these, especially the, 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 the gender topic, especially in this month, because that's when they're rejoicing. You know? They don't know that the rainbow is the mercy of God. His mercy endures forever. But we know that the first earth was destroyed by water. The second one is reserved for fire, as written in Second Peter chapter three. But we have to be ready when the, when, when these topics come across our table to address them with the Word of God, and the Spirit of God will back you up because it's the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, and He will back you up when you speak. It doesn't matter who likes, who doesn't like it, whatever. If it comes across my table. I'm going to address it. That's why they don't have me on camera. That's why they don't have me on the microphone because I debunk all of that stuff. I'm just being honest. Don't ask me because you're going to get it. You're going to get truth. Right? And we have to be like, we're not compromising. Stop with the compromise. There's only two genders. There's two separate events. The twinkling of a nine moment. No, I do not have to endure the great tribulation. We're not appointed to wrath. Jesus, who was delivered, will deliver us from the wrath to come. That's First Thessalonians 1.10, 1 Thessalonians 5.9, 1 
and he will keep us because we kept the word of promise. He's going to keep us from the hour of temptation that will fall upon all the inhabitants of the earth. That's not me. That's Revelation 3.10. Where does that say that I have to endure? No. Because they, they, they put those two events in the same box and they're separate events. So let's be stewards of the word of God. Now, I ain't beating nobody over the head. But if you ask me, I'm going to address it. Because I know who I am in Christ. I am a magi of the kingdom of heaven. Because they were judges. I am a royal priesthood in Christ. I have kingship in him. And that's what I was referring to earlier, that there's a lot of people that just, just because they don't want to offend nobody or, you know, I don't want my business to close down and I don't, you know, I don't want my ministry to fall. Oh, well, yeah, I kind of put the flag up, you know, because I don't want the funds to stop. Who are you persuaded by, man or God? At the end of the day, who persuades you, man or God? End of story. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, brothers, there's a place in Europe, in England, the Rothschild. Lee Rothschild already has stores, grocery stores, shopping stores over in England. And you can use cash based off of whether or not you were gender friendly and climate change. Then you can buy your groceries. Something to think about, brothers, because it's moving all over the world. We all have to be prepared. Amen. Hey, I, I, I believe that when the scripture points out, because uh, it's kind of relating to what you said, G, about uh, going upside somebody's head with the truth. And I'm not saying you're going to, you know, because what I'm trying to get at is when, if, if the word says your enemy's hungry, feed them. And if they're thirsty, give them the drink. I interpret that as that's the word. Give them the truth. And then let God, praise God if it's conviction, praise God if it's a revelation, let God reap the whole, the coals, the coals of fire on their head. Let God go upside the head. He's a, let his judgment, let that conviction be something that'll wake Amen. a person up. Let that, let that conviction of the truth shake them up. So let it be a seed. And of course, God will give the increase. Because instead of, you know, fighting fire with fire or, or, or ridiculing someone or, or you know, uh, uh, character assassinating anyone, you give them the truth. Give them the truth. Now, I'm thinking about that scripture right now when they met the, 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 the beggar wanted arms and the disciples said, silver and gold I, have, I don't have. But what I do have, we, we certainly know is more priceless uh, than silver and gold. The word. That word that will set the captives free. Amen. People are still Amen. stuck, stuck out of the truth. They they need freedom. And you can be Amen. so committed into this certain lifestyle. You can be so committed under those practices. You know that becomes a it becomes an authority over you that you practice that so long, just like a drug or, or, or some kind of addiction. And you want to call it a lifestyle? You know there ain't no life in that. <laughs> ain't no life in that. And to counter what my and to go along with what my brother said about the uh, the, the woman's uh, hip, the way her body is shaped. Uh, this one guy, he was pointing out to the, the the LBGDQ whatever. He was pointing out the fact that uh, God, when He said, "Be fruitful and multiply," which was a command to His people, as He first got them going, and now I want you to go out there of which one of the scriptures, of course, tend, tend the garden. But he told the people, be fruitful and multiply. And how can that happen between two, two females or two men? Ain't nothing, 
no life coming out that. So you calling yourself a lifestyle, but you living a lie because there's no life in it. There's no life in that. There's no fruitfulness in that. And I identify that fruitfulness with prosperity. You cannot prosper. Your body will not prosper if you're bearing no fruit because the fruit is life. And God is a creator of life. He purposes life. That's his identity. Is it attribution or it's life? God is life. And so God promotes life. It's the bit in life is and growth. Growth is the essence of that. How can you have life and there's no fruitfulness? We're born again, right? So we have his life. That's why we need to apply these things. We know the truth, but we have to apply the truth and do the truth. My brother, my brother was quoting the word a long time ago when he said we are human beings, not human doers. So we do be, right? And the doing that we do is an evidence of what we already be. So we can be holy as we are becoming holy. We can be perfect as we're becoming perfect. Because because of God, we are already accredited that. So let our faith, let our faith stand as we trust in God and his promises, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of what it looks like. So we just plant seeds. Just tell them the truth and let the Lord give the increase. What else could you do outside of stepping in God's lane? Don't go upside his head, outside of going up, going up, putting that truth on him, and let the Lord reap the coals upside their head. <laughs> let the Lord put the conviction on them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hey, Lloyd, I just uh, wanted to add something you said in, you know, said earlier, probably about 10 minutes ago, and you're talking about, you know, the religious spirit and stuff like that. I believe it was you were talking about. But um, what's interesting is, you know, quite often the devil takes what God meant for good and uses evil. And I would say religion is man made. That's not God made. So anything not God made ultimately is probably not good. However, it has, it has done good. It has brought people to the table it has brought someone like me who was raised in Catholicism uh, to the table of truth, right? The Lord's table. It's also afforded me to be able to walk up in person to that altar, take all my brokenness and set it up on that altar, knowing I don't need any religion, any approval by any religious council, priest, or anything like that to know who, who forgives my sins and where that's all at. But I would say this, um, you know, it's funny, let's, Let's do what the devil does best. So let's take something he created and use it against him. We know that religion is not perfect. We know that it sells a sometimes a false doctrine on truth. We know who, and we know who the truth is. And I would say take that and, and teach the people that have ran away from religion because they, they in their hearts know truth and they just mock and despise it now because of what the world's done to it. Christianity, by the way, is not a religion. It is a way of living. It is it's called the way originally. Then it was indoctrinated in, into a Roman bishop, which also became the Roman Catholic Church, right? And then you had you had all the Protestant churches break off from that. So all are different forms of religion that have some aspect of the movement called the way or Christianity to it in it. So why not take what the devil meant to do to stifle man's relationship with his creator and use it against him? So they come to a religious place. Well, those who truly love the Lord will say, who say those who truly love truth in their heart or know in their heart of hearts, they really are seeking out truth, may deny the Lord, may not understand what that deep personal relationship is like, because I did for many years. I love truth. Absolutely still do. But there was a point I did not know the Lord very personally at all. And so what I'm saying to that, let's take what the devil meant for uh, stifling God's relationship with his people and his people's relationship with him. And let's let's look at those religious people and encourage them like, hey, this religion is not the answer. You know, let's go after them. Let's cherry pick what, you know, the devil's herd of uh, cattle he's going to slaughter. Let's go cherry pick the ones out of there. Let's go get the ones. Let's go attack that. So, you know, the devil uses all kinds of brutal tactics. You know, I heard a minister once say, 
uh, I won't promote his site on here, but I, I like what the man has to say frequently. And that minister said that he asked the Lord about what happened to Stephen, the first martyr. And uh, the Lord kind of explained it to him like this, give him a visual, kind of give him a stage presentation. That was when when, when Paul uh, encouraged, or I don't remember if it was Paul, I think it was Paul that stoned him, if I remember correctly. But anyhow, the point was, was what the devil was meaning for evil. The Lord stood up when Stephen got martyred and said to the devil, that's going to cost you. So the devil took Stephen from the Lord in the sense of his life on this earth and what he was doing. So you know what the Lord did? He returned the favor and stole Paul from him. Ooh, that's pretty heavy. Look what Paul did. Look what Paul become. You know, good example of he who's been forgiven much loves much. That would be Paul for sure. So what I'm simply saying is don't ever let the tactics of the enemy go unchecked, right? And that's what I would encourage people is to let them uh, never go unchecked. Checked. And that is so, okay, the religious system, some people may not like, may scoff, may laugh at, may mock the religious systems, or even may mock God or the whole concept of God because they look at the religious systems and see hypocrisy. I understand. I got a brother who's just like that, by the way. And so there's going to come a time, there's a, there's a hope that I have in my heart, and the Lord just tells me to be patient with him. You know, that he will come to a realization of his choices and that he threw the baby out with the bathwater. He's going to go fetch the baby, which is the Lord. You're right. We call that just a little, little phrase we use in modern day terms. But he's going he's to get rid of the bad water, go fetch the baby, hence his relationship with the father and rekindle it. So, you know, I, I think that we can use the same tactics in a godly way because there's nothing the devil uses that God hasn't written into the code to allow it to exist. Right. The devil is part of creation, just like the rest of us. He just has access to things we can't either understand, see or remember. And so, you know, the reality of it is, is that don't don't ever feel like you're defeated when you're standing up against religious people, you know, and to what and to especially what um, George was saying earlier, people get offended. You're darn right. They're going to get offended. Why? Because you're telling them they're full of lies and they're full of sin. And it's not that you're accusing them. You mean, we're not the accuser. They look, they're offended because when you speak truth, people that have lies and death in them are offended. It's called the bait of Satan. That was a book that was written. I'm not promoting it, but I think it's a great idea to let you understand how evil works and what it likes to do. And so I would encourage folks, you know, don't don't be turned off. Don't I'm not saying don't go to church, nothing like that. What I'm simply saying is that when you deal with someone who's been offended by religion or is incredibly religious in their nature, you know, you can love on them, but don't hold back and 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 and, and pull the truth back because a lot of them speak error to me. Believe me, I know a lot of very devout Italian and Irish Catholics. And as soon as you bring up the Vatican, they get defensive. And I go, there you go. You know you're wrong because you're defending. Quit defending an agency that has its own bank, has its own intel organization, one of the probably the biggest on the earth. And, and you know, you, when did Jesus have all that? He didn't. So quit defending something that's corrupt and vile. Right. So and I, and I can say that because I was raised in that environment. And so when you deal with religious people, do not be afraid to offend them because it's the offense that's going to shake them. And believe me, when I was coming to the Lord, I was getting offended all the time and debating, arguing with all the, the believers around me. I don't know how they put up with me. But the Lord broke me down slowly. You know, I was a learning lesson for them just as much as I, you know, for them as as much as they were for me. So, you know, God uses all things. So, you know, I just wanted to add that because that just kind of popped in my head when that was brought up. And, um, you know, people have to let go of this false notion. It's called religion. I'm a Catholic. I'm a, I'm a Episcopalian. I'm a Methodist. I'm a non-denominational. Well, if that's all you are, I feel sorry for you. How about, hey, I'm a born-again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a son or daughter of the living God. But a being, you're done, you know. And that, and that's, and that is where it needs to end up. And if you can't say those things, then you got to really ask yourself where you're at. Because I could not say those things for years. I was ashamed of it, or I was scared to be put down, or I was afraid to be mocked. I just don't care anymore. I already know what this world is. I get what it is. I've seen and experienced aspects of this world that, that absolutely disappoints me because I put all my gifts and time into building a a worldly kingdom for, for Nate, and it got stripped away from me from, through the calamity and the lies of the, of the world that's taught me. You know, so... You know, I look at it like this, and as that is, is that I'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. 
nor will I throw the people out with the bathwater. But if they want to continue to go out with the bathwater, that's their choice. You want to reach out and say, hey, help me, Nate. I'll help you because people reached out and helped Nate many years ago. And continue to do this brokenness at times. So I just, you know, when it comes to the religions, we, we know the Bible says this, and that is, is that it makes a reference to the church, the harlot. And I would say that would probably be the Roman church. And then, um, and her daughters, which is all the Protestant churches. And I, and I think there's no accent that was put in there, right? So uh, let's, call it, let's call it what it is. You know, let's be a little clear here. Whether people get offended or not, they're going to be offended because you've, you've put light on their darkness. I mean, that's the reality of it. You force them to deal with something they don't want to deal with. And you know what? Better to do it here than before the living God at his throne when he's like, hey, you don't belong here. So sorry, you made all the wrong choices. We don't want that to happen. If you truly know the love of the Father, what he's done for you, personally, you know, you know, regardless whether you, you know, whether you want to or not, you're going to go out and help the Lord fetch his kids. Whatever, whether it's three kids or 3,000 kids, you're going to go help them because you realize and know intimately what he did for you. And if you're even honest, you're like, man, I was a bit of a scumbag. I don't even deserve that favor because you understand how awesome and loving he is. But it's not condemnation. It's not putting yourself down. You just come to the realization that's how intense the Lord's love is for each one of us. Right. And I'll tell you, personally, the most intense love I've ever had in my life was for a significant other wife. And yet those have failed me. Why? Because I didn't understand love, nor did they. So if that is the most intense we can understand and then the Lord affords you the opportunity to see the full the full Monty that you can you can comprehend in the human form. Um, believe me when I tell you this, I am not one to go out and fetch people that want to run away. Go ahead. Good luck in that minefield out there. <laughs> right. I'm not going out there getting blown up with you, but I'll go out in that minefield because those minds don't affect me. That sin doesn't affect me. That evil doesn't affect me. And so. Uh, you know, the way I look at it is like, hey, you know, just go deal with the religious people. You're going to offend them because of the nature of the truth. The only ones who get offended is those who don't like the truth, that like to hide in the darkness. That was like the shadows on the wall in the cave. So the truth will set you free, but the truth is also light. And yes, when you've had your eyes shut to darkness for a long, long time and you get exposed to light, it is incredibly uncomfortable and painful to the eyes. And that's the reality of this. That, that's, that is, you can't get a better analogy than that. And, and, and that, that, that will demonstrate who is uh, really willing to sacrifice their worldly life for their spiritual life. If, you know, that's what coming to the Lord really is, right? Like, you know, there's no better gift that Jesus said than a man to lay down his life for his brother, for his friend. Well, you're laying down your worldly life for your creator when you come to him. You're giving up this false life for him. And that's the first step to showing the kind of character you want to be, the kind of character you want to have. And that's why we talk about flavors of ice cream, because that's really the flavor of character of who you are in Christ. And as all these flavors of ice cream come together, that's what makes the body of Christ. Not Nate, not Ryan, not Joe, not Lloyd, not George, not caller six, five or seven. Right. That's 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 how it all works. And, uh, you know, generally speaking, and this message, I know all you guys get this, but this is for the people out there that are listening, that are riding the fence or don't like the religiosity or the holy roller mentality, because that is a turnoff for a lot of people. They just want it. Sometimes they just need to be told, this is how it is. This is what you need to do. Either take it or leave it. Is it fun sometimes? No. But what I can say as a man that's been incredibly hurt, that's done some brutal things in his life to other people out of that hurt, that pain. You know, it is worth every penny of it. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm not afraid to have bald like a baby before the Lord. And I'll continue to do it because his presence in my heart and in my life, even in the physical, when I felt his physical presence, I'd rather have that every every day of the week than to deal with the rest of this world. But I'm here. He's asked me to be here. And as a believer in that, coming out of a religious system, understanding how much he loved on me as one of his kids, because I wanted to be one of his kids, I get, okay, I'm going to go help you fetch your kids. Right. And that and, and, and I'll do what I can, how I can. And I'm not going to try to force the hand of God on me or force like, hey, I need to go do this for the Lord right now. He didn't tell me to do that. Hey, Nate, this number one thing he says to Nate, because Nate's like a rocket ship. Once you hit that button for launch, it's gone. 
Did we even aim it towards the moon? Did we aim it towards wherever we wanted to go? Probably not, or it wasn't dead on. So, you know, Nate's like, hey, Lord, here's my switch. It's either on or it's off. There is no in between. There is no volume control on that sucker. Either you, you press it on or off, I'll give you the switch. So, Nate, be still. That's the number one thing he said from day one when I came to him officially, 100%. Okay, I'm going to try it your way, Lord. I'm going to fight you every step of the way, but I'm going to try it your way. <laughs> it's, it's been a long road, 16, 17 years. But, you know, the point is, is that he's been faithful that way. And he wrote my code. He already knew I was going to say those things. He already knew I was going to come to that conclusion if I was honest and truthful of myself. Right? Yes, yeah, so Nate's a rocket ship. You got you know, hopefully it's not a nuclear warhead on, on uh, for the payload. Hopefully it's people or something good or godly, you know, and that's what we want. We just have to recognize who we are in the Lord and, and, and on the religious system stuff, um, not to be offended so much as to challenge it and realize that there's people in the religious system that are destined for hell, a lot of them. And you know that their hearts want the truth, but they're being stubborn because the world's taught them to be stubborn and they haven't died to self. They haven't laid down their worldly life for the father yet. Right. And when they do that, that's a sign of where they're going to go. They're going to go be with the father. And that's God wants his kids back. And um, that's what I have to say on that matter. But um, with the religious systems, you know, they're here. To, in my opinion, religious systems as a whole are designed to neutralize, water down and ultimately derail the children of God from finding their creator, their father in heaven. Amen. Amen. And, and you know, I've, I've, I've gone, I, I know, uh, I know Ryan wants to wrap it up. Um, you know, I, I've been under that, 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 that thorn of, of religiosity for so long that, and I know that is the true gospel that, that made me free and had made me free from 2000 years ago. And if you want to go further, it made me free before the foundation of the world. Okay. But once again, once we grab a hold of that truth, we want to make, we want to set the captives free. We want to make them free. Not only set them free, but make them. Because th this is a position. This is an identity. I am free. If you ask somebody, are you free? They know whether they're free or not. If somebody hesitates, ah, oh, you ain't free. You free? Yeah, I'm free. If somebody hesitates, uh, oh, no, 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 no. Right? You're still in bondage. You're still in bondage. And this is what the true gospel does. This is what the true gospel does. It makes them free. You either know you're freed or you're not. That's what Galatians 5 1, right? Says and declares. Let's let's walk in this liberty that Christ has made available and be ye not entangled again under the yoke of bondage. I mean, very specific. Very specific and very clear. And very simple. Don't do it. <laughs> Again, that disclaimer, my goodness, boy, I tell you, when the Lord revealed that those two disclaimers to me found in 1 Corinthians 6 and 10, I'm like, wow, so clear. He, he, I love him so much, and he loved me so much that I understand that he loved me so much. You know what? I'm not going to do nothing to defile this bed that I have and this covenant that I have with him, Hebrews 13, 4. That's it. Temptation going to come. I know I'm fine. As the bride of Christ, I know I'm a sweet fragrance. I know it. So temptation is going to come. But guess what? I'm to the point now that I know that his love has been demonstrated towards me. I am rooted and grounded in his love. I am built up in him that I'm not hey, going to fall for it. You I'm got not going to fall for it. You That's got it, Toyota. Pretty solid. So, I, so, so we, we are just, fine. See, that was a little rough. We are fine to the Lord, right? Because we are the image of his dear son. We've been translated into the image of his dear son. Yeah, okay. So like the enemy sees I'm us. I'm a little man. How you going to school that? We're not falling for it. I ain't falling for it. And that's why I talk with the boldness and the confidence that I, that I talk in. Because I know what I came for. Uh, I know what religiosity did. Right. I know what this world wanted uh, to do to like that. And if they had that authority, he would have done it a long time ago. He can't. And for this purpose, with the Son of God, 
manifested to destroy the works of Satan. That's it. Just that simple. He's thoroughly defeated. He's giving me that power, that dominion, and that authority. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. Amen, bro. Praise the Lord. Sorry, brother. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good morning, brother. Hey, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. I, uh, this is a pleasure, man. Just listen to you guys share. I'll tell you, man. Bowl of lightning just firing through the spiritual waves, you know, and, and, and fighting my spirit and provoking me to prepare for a good work today. And truth, I just love to say it. I say it and I keep saying it. Truth on Truth is truth no matter how you present it. In brief or detail, it's still truth. Resonating and provoking you to self-evaluation of what you perceive to be true. And when it's laid out to you in the simplicity and it crawls into the core of your inner being to the bowels of your spirit, it resonates some kind of change. It's going to provoke you to a change. You know, Truth will provoke you to repentance. Repentance to direction. To the truth. Who is the way, the truth, and the life? That's Jesus. That's why I love truth. I love it. I mean, people doubt it. Like the songs say, but I can't live without it because it's still truth. And it'll haunt you to the bitter end to bring you back to where you belong. For the one who knew you before you was formed in the womb of your mama. Truth. God's truth. His truth. Sent down to the earth in the form of Jesus Christ. Given to us and bring into our remembrance through the obedience of the Holy Ghost. Truth. Oh, truth. I thank you. I thank you. And I'm just listening to you, brother, share. <laughs> and and the Lord just formed a, a mindset within my spirit, man, the Holy Ghost. I was listening to Nate. He was just dropping some truth. George, just dropping truth. I just got on a little bit ago, and I caught you two brothers. And it's just, it's just so refreshing. It's like just so refreshing. To wake up and hear truth. Then it, it, it governs your day. It keeps you on the straight and narrow. Because it's truth. So when you hear things contrary to truth, and you see things that happen, you can't. Religion, I'm, I've been delivered from that so long because I grew up Pentecostal. And some things they, they taught me was, was valid. One thing about it, it led me to Jesus. But the religious things within it, that came from hearing truth, examining myself with truth. And I found it. And I found it in truth, Jesus, the true Jesus. So to hear you brothers continue to share is just a, it's a blessing. It's a refreshing you know, it's 949 here in California, L.A. So it's refreshing to hear this good word displayed. And it's just an honor and a pleasure. And I'm going to share this one last thing. Last Monday. And I want to share with the brothers. The line was open. I don't think no one was on the line. It was just open. Like, I'm going to open the doors of thought and whosoever. Whosoever, just come on in and open up your mouth and fellowship with the Lord. So when I came Monday, time, it was a little past the allotted time that we have. And it was open. The doors was just open. Like walking in a sanctuary and you look around everywhere. And you see the furniture, the pulpit, 
and nobody's there. And I, the image was I was able to walk from walk into the sanctuary of salt and walk up on the pulpit of the sanctuary of salt. And I looked across the empty seats. And then I just opened up my mouth. Mm. And he filled it. Mm. And I was just, just, it began to, just me and the Lord began to fellowship. I didn't hear no amens. I didn't hear no thank you, Jesus. I didn't hear, oh, beautiful, nothing. I was just open. And I and the freedom that was there, I was just talking. And that's, I looked up 45 minutes had passed. Then an hour had passed. No one in the, nobody was in the doors, to my knowledge. And then I hear a voice. It was Brother Greg. Hello, hello. Anyone here? Anyone, and I kind of was laughing to myself because I didn't want to say anything. Anyone here? Anyone here? And she came into the doors of an empty sanctuary, full with fire and lightning and promise within him. He was the light. It's like he hit the switch and the natural light was here. But when he opened up his mouth, he filled it with the glory and the light of God. <laughs> And then I just responded, I'm here, I'm here, Greg. He said, I didn't know nobody was there. I said, I'm here, Greg. And I, and I said, what you got, brother? And that brother must open up his mouth and the Lord filled him. Then I heard Lloyd. But this is what I'm driving at, gentlemen. This is why God is so beautiful. Greg began to share. And Greg began to open up his mouth. And he just began to speak out of the abundance of his heart. The mouth spoke. He just was just sharing. And then he's just having free reign. And he was talking about the homeless in the community and this guy with a, a, a boom box. And, the, new, and the, the people in the community he's in, this pretty interesting community he shared. And then as he was sharing, he was in the streets. And he started calling people out in the streets. So well, the Lord Say, okay, now he was street witnessing. And as he shared, and he began to preach, and as he began to share, hey, brother, you over here, this brother over here, he was scared. And every time he shared, he kept a song. Then we'll sing a song. A song will burst out, and he'll keep walking. And now we're singing songs, and Lloyd pop in, and we're just singing songs. And then as he go, he was singing, and then he'll get another brother. And he said he ministered on the four corners of his community, of an area of schools, and how he's taking authority over his area and over his community. And how a guy brought some music, and every time he brought music, it, was, it wasn't a desirable music that he would like to hear. And he said, brother, you got to play some other music. He said, well, give me a tape. Well, Lord got him, a, I mean, uh, uh, Greg got him another music tape for him to play. And so when he comes in that area, Greg said the music he was playing, but he was dancing in a gyrate manner for what Greg was describing. But it was beautiful. We had thought on lives on street witnessing. It was a street witnessing of thought live. And you just sit and listen and listen to Greg as he continued to sashay down the streets. Singing, praising. And witnessing the gospel about his father's business, provoking people to a good work, showing the love of God, live on the cross. As he entered into the sanctuary of an open door that sent him out into the labor field. letting his light shine among the community that he resigned in through singing and praising and worshiping the Lord. I'm telling you, brothers, <laughs> when it's in you, it's in you. Truth is truth. No matter how you spend it, it'll provoke you to a good work and it make you look foolish. 
He said he loved to do the foolish thing to confound the wise. What provoked his brother to do what Greg did? They look foolish. Who's willing to be foolish for Jesus? Who's willing to look foolish to confound those wise people, those religious people? Oh, we don't do it like that. No, we don't minister like that. No, we don't preach like that. You got the guy with a boom box playing music loud enough that we could be foolish enough to get his attention. That's what Greg did. I'm going to be foolish enough to get your attention. <laughs> Tell a religious guy, get that guy's attention. Oh, God bless you, brother. Love you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You ain't going to get that brother's attention. That brother's going to say, give me some music you want me to hear, that you want me to play. They have a dialogue. Greg, i get you something. Foolish. That's foolish to the religious man. Would a religious man go get him a get him some music or walk across the street when he see that guy? When he see that guy in dire need of truth, and he supposedly has the truth, what is he gonna do? With his collar turned backwards, and he sees somebody hurting, is he gonna walk across the street and keep a strutting, or he's gonna provide? the service of truth to someone in need. Thank you, Greg. He didn't have his collar turned backwards. He didn't have on a long robe draped in purple. He was just a brother with a light red truth. That's gospel. Whosoever Whosoever is willing to come out and be downright foolish for Jesus. Who is that guy? Who is that woman? Who is that individual? Take it to that level. Take it to that level and take dominion over their community. I give you power and authority to tread over serpents and scorpions and nothing by no means shall harm you. Wherever you place your foot, you're standing on holy ground. Whosoever. I'm talking about that dude who takes authority, who takes control. Not just with lip service, but with actions and deeds. I'm talking about that dude. Whosoever, that in the old school, this is what I learned in the religious sectors. They call it Holy Ghost boldness. They say at the church I used to go to, Holy Ghost boldness. Hey, that's pretty good. I like that. You got that Holy Ghost boldness. Holy Ghost direct you, and you look and say, Ah, I like when I like when George say that. Ah. You're apprehensive. You're reluctant. Ah. But when that Holy Ghost boldness you, oh, hits you, it ain't no ah. It's like, okay, Lord, all right, hit him with a bomb. Put that music down. I don't want to hear that. Well, go get you. Get me some other music. I'll play that. Okay. <laughs> Great God of the music. Wow. Don't tell me God ain't real. Right before my earwaves, he gave me a vigil as I saw Gray walking the street from a soft call. I had a visual, spiritual revelation in watching him sashay up and down the street as we sung and as he worshiped and as he was encouraged to continue to go wherever the Spirit of the Lord led him. So I say to every brother here today, whosoever is willing to call on his name and fulfill his will, to go out into the highways and the byways and to share the gospel with that Holy Ghost boldness, whosoever is willing 
He say, come. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Who's so willing to set the captives free? Come. Don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Just open up that mouth with all the articles of God that's embedded within your spirit, man, through your studying day and night. You got something to say because he know how I'll draw it out of you. But I need you to open up your mouth and I will fill it because you have done your due diligence in studying. Now trust me to fill it. I know that word because that's what happened to me. Trust me to fill it. Now just open up your mouth. Bam. And I was just listening to Greg from the spiritual week with a spiritual and I just saw it on a soft call. Listening with my spiritual ears and seeing with my spiritual eyes. A brother sashaying up and down the, the boulevards, sharing the gospel to whosoever came into his path, taking dominion over the streets that he, 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 he treaded on. And guess what? With no fear. but with love, joy, peace, all these things governed and directed by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I saw it, like watching a movie, like watching TV. But I was in, I was in my place of, 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 of comfort, my home. He was in the field, the field. But boy, when them songs burst out, we'll sing another song. And he'll say, no, but so many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. But he's so real to me. Hey, brother, over here. What's your name? Hey, how you doing? My name is Greg Watson. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You need anything? No, but the brother said no. Well, you want me to pray for you or something? Any prayers? Okay, let me pray for you. All right. This is me now. I'm in, I'm in the field. I'm in the control room of the field. Brother, I thank you, pray you for your... Give him what to say, because all great did was open up his mouth. Together, he's in the midst. Supporting him with prayer. Supporting him with, I don't know what to pray for. The Holy Ghost knows, so let me go to the heavenly language. Greg was just opening up his mouth. Hold him. Not a shame. Remember, his collar wasn't turned backwards. I mean, he didn't know if he was a minister of the gospel or whatever. You don't need to identify that. I'm a minister of the gospel, and to prove it, I'm going to turn my collar backwards and wear a purple robe. When I see your need, and it's a need that I can't meet, I'm going to walk across the street. Can't do it like the Samaritan did it. Go assist. Turn my collar backwards and, and ignore you, but you come to me. But Jesus came to whosoever would listen. Maybe at the well. Great example. He just went over there where she was at and read her, her life. Call upon Jesus in the day of trouble. He'll deliver us and we shall glorify him. He knows what you have need of before you act like the eunuch. And Stephen, when he got dropped off in the unit with asking questions, reading Isaiah, I believe it was. Come on. He just dropped you off in front of somebody. Are you going to deliver that old thing the Lord showed me? Are you going to deliver the mail? You got mail in that bag. Hey, hey, you got, hey, oh, it's a letter deep down in the corner. Oh, I got to deliver this mail. I got to deliver this mail. Well, you, you don't know the ex, no address. And the Lord appoints you right to the address. That's one. Give him this mail. 
when you deliver that mail and you begin to leave and minister and share what God wanted you to share, and then you go home with an empty bag and you lay your head in that bed and you think about the day that you had and all the things that you experienced in that day, and the Lord would take you into a deep trance and place you in a deep, what we call Proverbs chapter 3, a sweet leap. Ministering to you, your soul, while you lay your head at rest, refreshed for the next day to do it again. That's the kind of God we serve. That's why this ministry, the value of a ministry of this magnitude, he will show you the nuances and the depths of it. If you were looking, it goes deeper. What we share together as brothers, that's beautiful. But what I just experienced on Monday, it's absolutely marvelous. Marvelous in these old eyes. It was marvelous. Because I saw it from my living quarters. And I heard it from my living quarters. And I watched a brother fulfill witnessing and allowed me to engage from my living quarters. Not impeding his progress. And let him share whatever he had in the bowels of his spirit. And I sat here in agreement in prayer and following, encouraging the Holy Ghost boldness that came out of his mouth. So whosoever has ear to hear. The pleasant word that was sweet to the souls of the individual and health to their bodies, whosoever. So I just heard it this morning. George and Nate, I got to refresh. Now listen. Religion, religion is real, but we got to keep them in prayer. Let's continue to love on them. No need for you to turn your collar backwards. No need for you to put on a purple robe. You figure that out. All you know is you got to go out there and just study and share this precious word to whosoever. And you may run across one of them who's avoiding you by trying to cross the street because they see you too bold for how they've been taught to share this word. But that word would chase them like a Jesse Owens. And sometimes that word, I remember the days, and I'm going to give you an illustration, when ice people used to be walking and you could kick the back of their foot and they'd trip them up. <laughs> kick the back of their foot and they try to get away and you kick the back of their foot and they trip them up and they stumble and they fall and they look and you give them a helping hand up. And then they may be willing to listen. Go ahead, Saint. Keep it up. Keep up the Holy Ghost boldness. Keep leaving that door open, uh, Ryan. There was nobody in when I came, when I opened that door. I did like Greg, hello, hello, Tessie, hello, hello. <laughs> but the door was open. The door was never closed. So what did I do? I just opened up my mouth and he ministered me and the Holy Ghost out of glorious time. And then when I hit the crescendo of the Love God and reach my pinnacle, and I just begin to just bask in the anointing, bask in that anointing in silence. And I hear somebody say, Hello, anybody here? Hello, hello, and it was great. <laughs> I don't know about you, brothers, but I'm excited. I'm excited. Amen. Much love to you, brothers. Man. Keep it up. Keep keep fighting the good fight of faith. Whosoever's willing.